So, hello people. So, ito na ang ating illustrative problem for hedging. So, again, ang gagamitin natin ditong hedging instrument is a derivative instrument. So, ibig sabihin yung ating derivative instrument dito is now designated for hedging purposes. Kaya kung gusto nyong hanapin is yung video about derivative instrument na designated for speculation purposes and hindi for hedging purposes. So, doon yun sa ibang video natin. So, i-check nyo na lang yung ating playlist. Pero, itong ating discussion dito, ang derivative instrument is designated as a hedging instrument. So, for hedging purposes siya. At, yun nga lang, ang discussion natin will focus only on one type of derivative instrument. And this is the forward contract. At ang ating hedging relationship dito sa discussion will be fair value hedge. So, ibig sabihin, all throughout this video, sa lahat ng problems na i-discuss ko, lahat ng gagamitin natin is forward contract at lahat ng ating hedging relationship is fair value hedge. So, wag na natin patagalin. Let us now proceed to the first problem. So, let us start with our first illustrative problem. So, sabi rito, this is an exposed foreign currency monetary liability which is a result of importation. So, sabi niya, since this is a foreign currency monetary liability, so kahit hindi natin binabasa pa yung problem, so yung monetary liability daw natin is denominated in foreign currency. So, dahil ito ay denominated in foreign currency which is not the functional currency, so exposed to, sa transaction exposure which is a result of the changes in the exchange rate. So, ang sabi rito rin, forward element daw is included from the hedging relationship. So, ibig sabihin mamaya, pag kinumpute natin yung ating changes in the fair value of the hedging instrument, we are not going to split or separate the spot element from the forward element. So, yung total ng spot element and forward element will be part of the hedging relationship. So, let's start. On November 30, 2020, ABC Corporation purchased an equipment costing 1,000 British pounds payable on February 28, 2021. On the same date, the entity also entered in a 90-day forward contract to purchase 1,000 British pounds for a fixed price of 63,050 for a fixed price of 63,150 pesos. ABC Corporation prepares financial statements on a monthly basis. So, ang sabi dito, si ABC Corporation, bumili siya ng equipment. And yung equipment daw na yun is denominated in British pounds, which is a foreign currency. So, ang ating assumption, ang kanyang functional currency is the Philippine peso. So, dahil daw ang kanyang functional currency is Philippine Peso, pero yung kanyang biniling equipment is denominated in British Pounds. So, ibig sabihin yung kanyang liability na payable on February 28, 2021 is exposed to exchange rate fluctuation. So, dahil exposed yun sa risk, kasi baka siya malugi sa pagbaba ng value ng Philippine Peso, kaya on the same date, siya ay kumuha ng forward contract which is a derivative instrument. At ang purpose niya kaya siya kumuha ng forward contract is to hedge the foreign currency monetary liability resulting from the purchase transaction. So yung changes sa fair value ng ating derivative dito, yun ang gagamitin natin na pang offset sa changes in the exchange rate ng ating foreign currency monetary liability. So ngayon, let's start. So let's proceed to our Excel file. So let's start answering the problem. So bago tayo mag-prepare ng ating journal entries, gawa uli muna tayo ng ating schedule. So para saan tong schedule na to? So to facilitate our preparation of the journal entries. Kasi mamaya, ang i-record natin is the fluctuation in the exchange rate which affects the foreign currency monetary liability. Kasi nga tayo ay magkakaroon dito ng accounts payable kasi ang ating transaction is a purchase transaction and ang ating purchase transaction is a credit purchase. So to start, 
So, ang unang date natin is the date of transaction which is November 30. And on this date, tayo ay magre-record ng ating accounts payable. At syempre, ang ating accounts payable, kahit na ito ay denominated in British Pound, this should be recorded in the books using Philippine Peso kasi Philippine Peso ang ating functional currency. So, para ma-record natin yung peso equivalent nito on November 30, this should be measured using the spot rate on this date. So, let's start with our notional amount. At ang notional amount natin is the number of units of British Pounds and that is 1,000 British Pounds. So, multiply natin to sa ating spot rate on this date at ito ay 63.20. So, 1,000 multiplied by 63.20. So, ang ating accounts payable daw to be recorded initially on this date, the date of purchase is 63,200 which is already in Philippine Pesos. So, dito, since ito ang ating hedge item at ang ating hedge item dito is the monetary liability denominated in foreign currency. So, ang ginagamit natin dito to measure this is the spot rate. So, hindi tayo rito gumagamit ng forward rate. So, next date tayo, December 31, 2020. So, since ito ay year-end, kailangan natin gumawa ng financial statements. And syempre, the accounts payable that should appear in the statement of financial position on this date should be based on the closing rate, the spot rate on December 31, 2020. So, magkano dapat ang Philippine Peso equivalent na ating accounts payable on this date? So, syempre yun ay 1,000 British Pounds multiplied by the spot rate on December 31, 2020 at yun ay 63.30. So, ang accounts payable in Philippine Peso is 63,300. And syempre, initially, ang ating accounts payable at date of transaction is recorded at 63,200. Pero daw, dapat... On December 31, this should appear at 63,300. So, it will increase by 100 pesos. So, ito ay negative kasi ito ay loss. So, ibig sabihin, on this date, we will record a loss of 100 pesos because of an increase in liability. So, after nito, next date natin is January 31, 2021. Kasi tayo ay gumagawa ng ating financial statements on a monthly basis. So, ibig sabihin, gagawa tayo ng statement of financial position on this date. And, syempre, yung accounts payable that will appear in the statement of financial position should be based on the closing rate at the end of January. So, magkano ang accounts payable dapat? So, 1,000 British pounds multiplied by the spot rate on this date, which is 64.05. So, ang peso equivalent ng ating accounts payable is 64,050 pesos. And again, from December 31, 2020, ito ay nag-increase. So, magkano ating increase which is again an increase in liability which will result to a loss of 750 pesos. So, for the month of January, tayo ay magre-record ng loss of 750 which resulted from the increase in accounts payable. Then, on the settlement date, which is February 28, 2021, so ito na yung final amount of accounts payable and ito yung amount of accounts payable that needs to be paid on this date. So, 1,000 notional amount in British pounds multiplied by the spot rate, which is 63.70. So, ang ating babayaran on this date is 63,700, which is a decrease in accounts payable From January 31 balance na 64,050 pesos. So, syempre kung ito ay decrease in accounts payable, it means this is a gain. So, magkano ating gain? Siya ay 350 pesos. So, bago tayo pumunta sa ating hedging instrument, let us first prepare the journal entries related to the hedge item. So, let's start on the date of transaction and that is November 30, 2020. So, ang entrada natin is debit equipment. So, magkano equipment? Siya ay 63,200 pesos and credit accounts payable at 63,200 pesos. So, on this date, gumamit tayo ng dalawang account titles. Pero, between the two, only accounts payable is the monetary item. So, kaya ito lang ang ating i-re-measure or itatranslate natin every 
end of the reporting period using the closing rate. Pero for the equipment which is a non-monetary account, so hindi na ito tinatranslate using the closing rate at the end of the reporting period because this should be recorded at historical rate. So next date natin is December 31, 2020. Ang sabi natin dito sa ating schedule, ang ating accounts payable will increase by 100 pesos and this resulted to a loss of 100 pesos. So to record, so debit tayo ng loss pero ang gagamitin ko account title for both gain or loss ay isa na lang para offsetting account na lang siya. So yan ay 100 pesos. Then ang ating credit is accounts payable to increase the liability account for 100 pesos. Then next nating entrada, January 31, 2021. So, again, tayo ay magre-record ng loss pero 750 pesos naman. So, debit tayo ng loss for 750 and credit accounts payable for 750 pesos. So, now let us proceed to the last transaction date which is the date of settlement, February 28, 2021. So, dito ang gagawin ko is a compound entry. So, to record the compound entry upon settlement, so ang ating entrada would be debit accounts payable for 64,050 pesos. So, ito yon yung kanyang unadjusted balance. So, i-debit na agad natin siya. Then, tayo ay mag-credit ng gain of 350 kasi nagkaroon tayo ng decrease in exchange rate. And, syempre, tayo ay mag-credit ng cash. At ang cash na ibabayad natin, syempre, ay hindi... Philippine Peso. Ang ibabayad natin is 1,000 British Pounds. Pero syempre, kapag nirecord natin yung dito sa ating libro, ito dapat ay naka Philippine Peso. At ang Philippine Peso equivalent nito is 63,700 which is based on the spot rate at date of settlement. So ito ang ating entrada for the hedge item. So ngayon, punta naman tayo sa ating hedging instrument. Pero bago pala muna tayo pumunta sa ating hedging instrument, kumpitin muna natin yung ating magiging net gain or loss resulting from this transaction. So, ang ating net gain or loss on foreign currency exchange rate is 500 and this is a loss. So, ito yung ating total na mga gains and losses recorded throughout the duration of this transaction from date of purchase until date of settlement. So, nagkaroon tayo ng loss. At ito yung gusto nating i-hedge or i-offset gamit yung ating hedging instrument. So, tingnan natin kung ito ba ay ma-offset gamit ang ating hedging instrument. And ganun uli, bago tayo mag-prepare ng ating journal entries related sa hedging instrument, gawin muna natin uli ang ating hedging instrument schedule to monitor the changes in the forward rates. So let's start with the date of transaction. Ito yung date of inception, yung start ng ating forward contract which is same with our date of purchase ng ating hedge item which is on November 30, 2020. So to start, so ang ating notional amount, so which is 1,000 British pounds, kasi sabi natin sa ating forward contract, tayo ay bibili ng 1,000 British pounds at a fixed price of 63,150 pesos. Kung ito ay 63,150 pesos, ibig sabihin, ang ginamit niya to compute for the fixed price is the forward rate on November 30, 63.15. Kasi, 1,000 British pounds multiplied by 63.15, ang total niyan is 63,150. So, yung ating payable is already fixed at 63.15. Kasi, fixed na yan. At yan yung ating gagamiting pambayad, which is in Philippine Peso. Pero, yung matatanggap natin, which is a receivable, is based on the spot rate on date of settlement. So, for the meantime, ang ating receivable will be measured using the forward rate. So, ang forward rate natin again on November 30 is 63.15. So, ang ating receivable at forward rate, which is in Philippine Peso, is 63,150, which is same with the fixed price of 63,150. Kasi on this date, ang ating receivable at ang ating payable ay walang difference. Kaya on this date, wala pang value ang ating derivative. At sabi nga natin, paano ba nakukuha ang value ng derivative? Siyempre, nakukuha yon from the changes in the fair value of the underlying value of measure. And since wala pang change ang ating underlying value of measure, which is the foreign currency, 
which is in forward rate. So, wala pang value ang derivative. At syempre kasi, ang derivative natin is taken from the cumulative change since the start of the contract. And since this is November 30, which is the inception date ng ating contract, so obviously, wala pa talagang change kasi kakasimula pa lang ng ating forward contract. So, wala tayo rito ng derivative on this date. Tsaka wala rin naman tayong binayarang premium for the forward contract. Kaya wala rin talagang value ang ating derivative. So again, on November 30, ang ating down receivable, forward contract receivable, will be 63,150. And again, ano daw itong 63,150 pesos na to? So ito daw yung Philippine peso equivalent ng 1,000 British pounds na sa tingin natin na marireceive natin on date of settlement after 90 days. So ngayon, let's proceed to the next date which is December 31, 2020. So ganun uli, kailangan nating ma-compute kung magkano kaya yung ating derivative on this date, December 31, 2020. So yung value ng derivative dito, syempre will be based on the change in the forward rate. To determine the change in the forward rate, so kailangan nating ma-compute yung forward contract receivable natin as of December 31, 2020. So, compute na natin. So, para ma-compute yun, 1,000 ang ating notional amount, which is in British pounds. Then, i-multiply natin sa forward rate on this date. So, yun ay 63.30. And again, when we say forward rate, hindi ito yung mga spot rates on this date. Kasi obviously, iba ang ating spot rates on this date. And again, pag sinabi nating forward rate, ibig sabihin, ito yung iniisip nating magiging spot rate at date of settlement. Pero not necessarily, yan yung magiging spot rate talaga. Pwedeng mas mataas o kaya pwedeng mas mababa yung actual spot rate at date of settlement. So, magkano ang total nito? So, 1,000 times 63.30, that is 63,300. So, since nagkaroon ng change in the forward rate, so magkakaroon na ng fair value ang ating derivative on December 31, 2020, which is the change in the forward rate. And magkano yun? So, yan ay 150 at yan ay positive. So, bakit positive? Kasi tumaas ang ating receivable at bakit siya asset 150? Kasi ang sabi natin, Kapag ang inflow is greater than outflow, ibig sabihin, mas malaki yung receivable kesa sa payable. So, kapag ganito ang scenario, so, ang difference between the inflow and the outflow is an asset. Kasi since ang ating forward contract is a forward contract to purchase, ang fix natin is the outflow. So, fix tong outflow na to, hindi na to magbabago. This is at 63.15. Pero yung inflow natin is based on the spot rate at date of settlement which is pinoforecast pa lang natin gamit ng forward rate. So kapag ang forward rate natin which is the inflow nagbabago at siya ay tumataas compared dito sa ating outflow na 63.15, ang difference silang dalawa ay asset. So since ang ating forward rate dito ay 63.30 on December 31, 2020, so yan yung inflow natin on December 31, 2020. Pero ang outflow natin is still at 63.15 so ang difference is an asset. Again, kasi mas malaki ang inflow kaysa sa outflow and yun ay 150 pesos. And syempre kapag naman ang outflow ang mas malaki kaysa sa inflow, so that's the time na ang difference sila ay magiging liability. So ngayon, since tayo ay nagkaroon ng derivative na 150 which is a result from the change in the forward rate, so, kailangan natin mag-recognize ng gain or loss for the month. So, which is also at 150. So, since this is an asset, nagkaroon tayo ng asset, so this will be a gain. So, next day tayo, that is on January 31, 2021. So, ganun pa din. Kailangan natin mag-compute ng ating derivative for this month. And that will be based on the change and cumulative change in the forward rate. So, to compute, so 1,000 multiplied by the forward rate on this date, January 31, 2021, that is 63.80. So, 1,000 times 63.80, that is 63,800 pesos. 
So, since nagkaroon ng change in the forward rate, so nag-increase ang ating forward rate at 63.80, so magkano ating cumulative change sa forward rate? So, ang total nun is 650 pesos. So, paano to na-compute? So, na-compute yan as the difference between 63,800 minus 63,150. So, ito ang makikita natin sa ating statement of financial position. And again, sabi natin ang ating outflow is at 63.15 pero ang inflow natin is at 63.80. Kaya ang difference ng dalawa is considered an asset. At magkano ang difference ng dalawa? 650. So since syempre ito, cumulative change na makikita sa balance sheet, so meron din tayong change na makikita sa income statement at yun yung gain or loss which is the change for the month. So, magkano ang change natin for the month of January? So, that is 500 gain. So, bakit yan 500 pesos na gain? Kasi increase yan in asset. From 150 naging 650. Then, punta tayo sa date of settlement which is on February 28, 2021. 20, magkano ang ating derivative on this date? So, syempre, umpisa natin sa ating notional amount. That is 1,000 British pounds. Pero, At this date, since ito ay date of settlement na, hindi na tayo gagamit ng forward rate. Kasi, kaya na nating malaman ang spot rate on this date. At ang spot rate natin on this date is 63.70. So, yan ang ating gagamitin at date of settlement to settle the forward contract. At magkano ang total receivable na marireceive natin? So, that is 63,700 pesos. So, ito na yung Philippine Peso Value ng British Pounds na marireceive natin on February 28, 2021. So, to compute the derivative, ganun uli, cumulative change, which is 550 pesos. And paano na compute to? So, yan ay 63,700 minus 63,150. So, since ang inflow is mas malaki kesa sa outflow, so, yan pa rin ay Asset. So, kahit na nagkaroon ng decrease in the derivative, so ganun pa rin naman, ang inflow is still higher than the outflow. Kaya, ito ay asset pa din. Pero, since nagkaroon ng decrease in derivative, so meron tayong loss for the month of February. And that is 100 pesos na loss. Kasi, from 650 naging 550. And again, yung gain or loss for the month will appear in the income statement. Pero yung cumulative change, which is the derivative account, will appear in the statement of financial position. So ngayon, let's start the journal entry for our hedging instrument. At ang gamitin natin, halimbawa, ay gross settlement. So kunwari, magkakaroon tayo ng actual delivery. Ibig sabihin, ng may actual delivery, ang ating entity makaka-receive talaga ng 1,000 British Pounds On February 28, 2021. So, let's start our entry. So, syempre may debit and credit columns. At ang sabi natin, for the hedging instrument daw, ang forward element will be included in the hedging relationship. So, hindi natin hahatiin yung value ng derivative. Again, ito yung value ng ating derivative. Hindi natin to hahatiin sa spot element at forward element. Ibig sabihin, yung buong changes in the derivative will be part of the hedging relationship. So, ngayon, i-record na natin. So, on November 30, 2020, paano mag-record ng ating transaction kapag gross settlement? Siyempre, mag-record tayo ng receivable account at payable account. So, ang entrada natin would include debit British pounds receivable. So, that is 63,150. And peso payable, that is 63,150 as well. So, dito sa dalawa, ang fix dyan is yung peso payable. Kasi ito yung outflow natin which is fixed at 63.15. Pero ang nagpa-fluctuate dito is yung British Pounds Receivable. Kasi ang marireceive natin is in British Pounds but it must be recorded in Philippine Peso. So ito ang ating i-update simula November 30 until date of settlement. So ngayon meron tayong dalawang accounts. Yung British Pounds Receivable at Peso Payable. And itong dalawang to ay both real accounts. Pero hindi natin to ipepresent sa statement of financial position separately. 
ito ay i-represent na naka-offset. Kasi ang i-represent natin dapat sa statement of financial position is yung value ng derivative. At yung value ng derivative is nakocompute as the difference between the British pounds receivable na account at nung peso payable. So, depende na lang kung ano ang mas malaki sa dalawang real account, yun na magiging balance. So, kung ang mas malaki is the British pounds receivable kaysa sa peso payable, so magiging asset balance ang ating derivative. At syempre, dun siya ipepresent sa asset section. Pero kung ang mas malaki is peso payable compared sa British pounds receivable, so yung difference nila will be a liability. At dun siya sa liability section ng balance sheet ipepresent. Pero as of this date, November 30, wala pa tayong value ng derivative kasi nga wala pang difference yung British pounds receivable at saka peso payable as also seen in our schedule. Doon sa cumulative change ng ating schedule on November 30, wala pa siyang value. Kaya wala pang value ang ating derivative on this date. Kaya ang sabi dito, on December 31, 2020, ang receivable dapat ay mag-increase, maging 63,300. So, mag-increase siya ng 150 pesos. So, to record, ang increase in British pounds receivable, syempre ang entrada natin is debit British pounds receivable for 150. And since nag-increase ang receivable, mag-record tayo ng gain. So, ang gain natin is 150 pesos. Then, next natin is January 31, 2021. So, sabi rito, nagkaroon uli ng increase in the British pounds receivable. So, magiging 63,800. So, magiging increase ng 650. Pero yung 650 na yan kasi, yan ay cumulative since the start. Ang kailangan lang natin is yung increase simula December 31. So, that is 500. So, to record, that is debit British pounds receivable for 500 and credit gain for 500. So after na entrada na to, January 31, 2021, ang adjusted balance na ng ating British pounds receivable is already 63,800 pesos. Then punta tayo ngayon sa date of settlement which is on February 28, 2021. At ang sabi natin, nagkaroon tayo ngayon ng decrease which is a loss, decrease in the derivative value. So, syempre, to record a loss, yan ay debit loss, 100, then credit British pounds receivable for 100 pesos. So, syempre, kahit... So, after this entry, ang value na ng ating derivative is already at 550 pesos. And since this is already the date of settlement, we can now prepare the journal entry for the settlement. And sabi natin, tayo ay may actual delivery kasi gross settlement tayo. So, paano ang gagawin natin? So, unahin natin is yung makaka-receive tayo ng 1,000 British Pounds. So, para makareceive, debit tayo ng cash in British Pounds. And again, ito yung actual na 1,000 British Pounds na na-receive natin. Pero, this will be recorded in the books in Philippine Peso. At yun ay to be recorded using a spot rate of 63.70 which is 63,700 pesos. And credit, British pounds receivable which is currently recorded at 63,700 pesos as well. Then after nito, syempre nakatanggap tayo ng cash so dapat tayo ay magbayad. So ang babayad natin is yung ating fixed price na 63.15 na forward rate. So para intradahan, tayo ay mag-debit peso payable 63,150 and credit cash which is Philippine peso at 63,150 pesos. And since sabi natin ang ating hedging instrument at hedge item, ang kanilang hedge relationship is a fair value hedge. So, ang changes in the fair value of our derivative, which is the forward contract, will be recorded all in the income statement, profit or loss, kasi tayo ay fair value hedge. And since dito sa ating hedging instrument, ang mga na-record nating gains and losses sa ating income statement, which resulted from the changes in the value of the forward contract, so, nagkaroon tayo ng gain na 550 pesos which is the result of all gains and losses recorded during the 90-day term of the forward contract. So yung ating hedging instrument nagkaroon ng 550 pesos na gain at yung ating hedge item nagkaroon ng loss na 500 pesos. So ibig sabihin for the total of the transactions nagkaroon tayo ng net na 50 pesos gain. 
So dahil dito sa ating hedging instrument, natanggal or na-offset yung 500 pesos na loss galing sa hedge item. Kasi nagkaroon tayo ng gain dito sa ating hedging instrument. Pero kung hindi tayo nag-hedging, so hindi tayo nag-acquire ng forward contract, so magkakaroon tayo ng loss from the accounts payable na 500 pesos. Pero nga, dahil tayo ay kumuha ng forward contract to hedge the foreign currency monetary liability instead of loss, nagkaroon tayo ng net na 50 pesos gain which is the result of our hedging. Pero yung 50 pesos na net gain that is computed after considering the transaction in total. Pero magkaibang accounting period kasi itong part na to at itong part na to. So kung sa 2020, ito lang ma-record na loss for the hedge item, tapos ito yung gain for the hedging instrument. So, magkano ang marirecord na gain or loss net in 2020? So, that will be 50 pesos. Kasi in 2020, may 100 loss dito sa hedge item, tapos merong 150 gain dito sa hedging instrument. Kaya, ang net nila na mag appear sa income statement is a gain of 50 pesos. Then, in 2021, so, meron tayong i-record na negative 250 dito in January and positive 250 in February. So, yung 250, yan yung difference sa 500 and 750. And yung 250 na positive in February is yung difference between 350 and 100. So, for 2021, so, wala tayong net gain or loss from the offsetting of hedge item and hedging instrument. Pero, if we consider the transaction as a whole, so, meron tayong net na 50 pesos which is a gain, which is the difference between the total gain or loss in the hedge item and the hedging instrument as a whole transaction. So this is our accounting for fair value hedge of a foreign currency monetary liability if the forward element is included in the hedging relationship. So now let us proceed to our second illustrative problem. So sabi rito ay meron tayong exposed foreign currency monetary asset which resulted from exportation. And again, this is fair value hedge. So sabi kung exportation ito, so ibig sabihin that is a foreign transaction. Pero it does not necessarily mean na kapag foreign transaction is automatic ding foreign currency transaction. Siyempre, para maging foreign currency transaction, dapat ang settlement currency natin should be different from the functional currency. So, tingnan natin. So, basahin natin ang problem. So, on November 2, 2020, XYZ Corporation sold merchandise for 1,500 US dollars to JKL Company. So, nagbenta tayo kay JKL at denominated siya in US dollars. So, tayo si XYZ Corporation. And the amount is collectible daw on January 31, 2021. So, to hedge the foreign exchange risk arising from the exportation, on November 2, 2020, XYZ entered into a forward contract to sell 1,500 US dollars at 49.50 pesos per unit of USD and this agreed to be on a net cash settlement basis. So, since sabi niya rito, may exposure si XYZ Corporation to foreign exchange risk, so ang assumption natin, ang kanyang functional currency is in Philippine peso. So, the hedging relationship is designated as fair value hedge. So, XYZ Corporation prepares monthly financial statements regularly. So, sabi niya, para ma-minimize ang risk from the fluctuation of foreign exchange rates, si XYZ Corporation ay nag-acquire ng forward contract to sell 1,500 US dollars at a fixed price of 49.50 pesos. So, yung 49.50 pesos is a fixed price. Yan yung kanyang makukuha kasi contract to sell. So, yan yung ma-receive niya on settlement date which is after 90 days 
So, ibig sabihin ng ating hedge item is the receivable dito is an exposed foreign currency monetary asset. So, ito yung ating hedge item. Then, for the hedging instrument, ang hedging instrument natin dito is the derivative which is the forward contract. And yung changes in the fair value of our derivative, yun yung gagamitin natin pang offset sa gains and losses resulting from the fluctuation of foreign exchange rates affecting our hedge item, which is again the foreign currency monetary asset. And sabi natin dito, ang hedging relationship daw is fair value hedge. Ibig sabihin, ibig sabihin, the gains and losses in the derivative instrument will be recognized in profit or loss. And ang sabi rin niya, the forward element daw is included in the hedging relationship. So, ibig sabihin, yung ating fair value ng ating derivative instrument or yung forward contract dito ay hindi na natin hahatiin into spot element and forward element. So, ibig sabihin, yung lahat ng changes in the fair value ng ating derivative instrument ay gagamitin natin pang offset sa ating gains and losses from the hedge item. So, let us now proceed to our Excel file. So, ngayon, nandito na tayo sa Excel. So, let's start by preparing the schedule first for the hedge item. And again, ang ating hedge item is the exposed asset which is the receivable. So, ang ating receivable is a monetary asset that is denominated in foreign currency. So, ito ang ating hedge item. So, kung magkaroon man ng fluctuation sa exchange rates, any changes will be recorded in profit or loss. So, to monitor the changes, let's start on the date of transaction which is November 2, 2020. So, at date of transaction, ang ating receivable will be recorded at the notional amount ng 1,500 US dollars. Pero syempre, it should be recorded in a functional currency which is the Philippine Peso. So, kaya kailangan itong i-measure at Philippine Peso kahit ito ay denominated in US dollars. At ang gagamitin natin is the spot rate. So, hindi tayo gagamit dito ng forward rate. So, ang spot rate natin on November 2 is 49.42. So, ang ating receivable that will be recorded in Philippine Peso is 74,130 pesos. So, ito ang ating initial amount recorded under account receivable. So, on November 30, syempre month end, kasi gumagawa daw tayo ng monthly financial statements on a regular basis. So, November 30, gagawa tayo ng financial statements. So, sa ating statement of financial position as of November 30, 2020, the account receivable that should appear must be based on the spot rate or the closing rate on this date. So, kaya kailangan nating i-remeasure ang ating accounts receivable. So again, let's start with the notional amount of 1,500 US dollars na ang spot rate natin on this date, November 30, 2020 is 49.37. So 1,500 multiplied by 49.37 ang account receivable in Philippine Peso. Siyempre, siya ay 74,055 pesos. So yan ang so, yan ang amount ng account receivable that will appear in the balance sheet as of November 30, 2020. And syempre, sabi natin, the accounts receivable is initially recorded at 74,130. Pero, in the November 30 balance sheet, it should appear at 74,55. So, nagkaroon ng change. At ang change natin is a decrease in the spot rate. So, kung magde-decrease ang spot rate, so, it will affect the accounts receivable. So, ibig sabihin, it will decrease the peso equivalent for the receivable. And since there is a decrease in receivable, which is an asset, so a decrease in asset is considered a loss. So, the decrease in AR for the month of November is 75 pesos. And this is recorded as a loss. So, let us now proceed to the next reporting date, which is year-end, December 31, 2020. So, since this is the year-end, so we are required to prepare our financial statements. So, sa balance sheet natin for this date, kailangan ang accounts receivable natin, the foreign currency monetary asset, dahil siya ay denominated in foreign currency, it must be translated using the closing rate, which is the spot rate at year-end. 
So to remeasure, let's start with the notional amount of 1,500 US dollars multiplied by the spot rate on this date which is 49.39. So 1,500 US dollars multiplied by 49.39 that is 74,085 pesos. So ito dapat ang ating accounts receivable year-end balance. So ngayon ang ating accounts receivable year-end balance is nag-increase from November 30. So since nag-increase yan, magre-record tayo ng gain. So magkano ang ating gain to be recognized for the month of December? So that is 30 pesos. So ito ay 74,085 pesos minus 74,055 pesos. So syempre, the gain is attributable to the increase in the spot rate from November 30 to December 31. So lastly, dun tayo sa settlement date which is January 31 which is the date of collection. So ito na yung amount to be collected. Ito na yung final Philippine peso value nung ating 1,500 USD na makukolekta natin sa pecha na to. So let's start with 1,500 notional amount multiplied by the spot rate of 49.36 so that is 74,040 pesos. So ito na yung final value ng ating accounts receivable in Philippine peso. And, nagkaroon ng decrease from December 31. So, from 74,085, magiging 74,040 na lang siya kasi nag-decrease ang ating spot rate from 49.39 to 49.36. At syempre, since ito ay decrease in AR, so that will be a loss. A loss of 45 pesos. So, now let us proceed to the preparation of our journal entries related to the hedge item. So, syempre, tayo ay mag-start sa ating date of transaction which is November 2. And since this is a sales transaction, particularly a credit sale, so to record a credit sale, that will be debit accounts receivable. And, nilag and nilagyan ko siya ng USD na label para malaman natin na yung ating accounts receivable dito is denominated in foreign currency which is the US dollar. Pero, this will be recorded in functional currency that is the Philippine Peso. So, ang peso equivalent ng ating accounts receivable on this date is 74,130 pesos based on our schedule. And, syempre, credit sales also at 74,130 pesos. So, on November 2, so meron tayong dalawang accounts na ginamit, accounts receivable and sales account. So, only the accounts receivable is the monetary item. Kaya ito lang yung ating nire-measure at year-end using the closing rate. And every month and syempre, basta reporting date. Pero for the sales account, since this is not a monetary item, so this will be recorded using the historical spot rate. So hindi na ito kailang i-measure pa every reporting date. So only the monetary item, which in our case, is the accounts receivable. So let us now proceed to the first month end after the date of sale. So that is November 30. So ang ating gagawin dito ng entrada is to remeasure the monetary item, which is the accounts receivable. At base sa ating schedule ng ating accounts receivable will decrease to 74,055 pesos, dahil ang spot rate ay nagdecrease from 49.42 at naging 49.37. Kaya dapat tayo ay mag-recognize ng loss at magkanong loss? 75 pesos. So, to record the loss, so debit tayo ng loss from Forex fluctuations of 75 and syempre, credit accounts receivable as well for 75 pesos. Then, on year-end, December 31, 2020, so syempre, required tayong gumawa ng financial statement kasi this is already the year-end. So, kailangan nating i-update uli ang ating accounts receivable using the closing rate, the spot rate on December 31. So, sabi dito sa ating schedule, ang ating accounts receivable ay nag-increase from November 30 to December 31. So, naging 74,085 pesos siya. So, nag-increase from 49.37, naging 49.39. Kaya, magre-recognize tayo ng gain na 30 pesos. So, to record the gain, debit tayo ng accounts receivable for 30 pesos and credit gain from Forex fluctuations for 30 pesos. Then finally, the last date which is the date of settlement, January 31, 2021. So makakakolekta na tayo dito from the customer. Pero syempre, 
i-update muna natin yung accounts receivable. So, hindi ako gagawa ng compound entry. So, ihiwalay ko yung entry natin for the update of the accounts receivable and the collection. So, sabi sa ating schedule, kailangan nating mag-recognize ng loss na 45 pesos. So, debit tayo ng loss from Forex Fluctuations for 45 pesos and credit accounts receivable USD 45 pesos. So, after nitong entrada na to, our accounts receivable balance will now be equal to 74,040 pesos and we are now ready to prepare the collections from the customer. So, debit tayo ng cash. So, anong cash? US dollar. Kasi ang ibabayad sa atin ng customer ay 1,500 US dollar. So again, yung cash na matatanggap natin from the customer is 1,500 US dollar. Hindi siya Philippine peso. Pero syempre, again, all transactions must be recorded in Philippine peso. So kaya, ang ating i-debit ay the Philippine peso equivalent of the 1,500 US dollar on January 31. That is 74,040 pesos, which is the current balance of our accounts receivable. And ang ating credit, syempre, collection to on account. So, credit accounts receivable, US dollar, also at 74,040 pesos. So, since sabi ko kanina, ang nakolekta natin ay 1,500 US dollar at hindi in Philippine peso. So, after January 31, 2021, So, may risk pa din na baka bumaba yung spot rate. So, bababa uli yung value ng ating cash in US dollar na 1,500 after January 31, 2021. Kaya, para hindi na tayo mag-recognize ng gain or loss from Forex fluctuations after January 31, 2021, may ige na i-convert na agad natin itong 1,500 US dollar into Philippine peso on this date. So, kaya kung sakaling, yung 1,500 US dollar on January 31, 2021, i-convert na agad natin into Philippine peso. So, magkakaroon ulit tayo ng isa pang entrada. So, ang entrada natin is debit cash Philippine peso, 74,040 pesos, and credit cash USD, 74,040 pesos. So, ibig sabihin, kung on the same day, January 31, 2021, yung 1,500 US dollar ay kinonvert mo agad into Philippine peso. So, in effect, pwede mo na itong i-compound journal entry. So, mag-offset itong debit and credit sa cash USD, kaya ang debit mo na lang ay yung cash Philippine peso. Again, yun ay kung yung 1,500 US dollar is i-convert mo na agad into Philippine peso on January 31, 2021. Which is, kung ayaw mo nang ma-expose pa sa fluctuation na exchange rate, mas maiging i-convert mo na siya into Philippine Peso on January 31, 2021. Kasi kung i-convert mo siya after January 31, 2021, so subject pa rin siya sa fluctuation ng exchange rate. Kaya, ito ang pinaka magandang gawin. I-convert mo agad at date of settlement. So, dahil dito sa ating transaction na to, Magkano ang net na gain or loss resulting from this transaction? So, based sa ating schedule, meron tayong recognize na 75 loss in November. Tapos nung December, nag-gain tayo na 30. Then, nung January, nagkaroon tayo ng loss na 45. So, ang ating net gain or loss on the foreign currency fluctuation is a loss of 90 pesos. So, yung 90 pesos na yan, is the net gain or loss resulting from this transaction if we consider the transaction as a whole. Kasi yung 90 pesos na loss na to, partly recorded to in 2020 and partly recorded in 2021. Pero, all these gains and losses are recorded in profit or loss. Ito yung amount of loss to be suffered by the entity if hindi tayo mag-hedging. So, kaya pinili ni entity na mag-hedging kaya siya nag-acquire ng forward contract. So again, ito ang loss natin from the exportation kung hindi tayo mag-hedging. Pero syempre, dito sa problem na to tayo ay nag-hedging by using a forward contract which is a derivative instrument. So ngayon, doon naman tayo sa hedging instrument. So paano ang ating journal entries for the hedging instrument? So ganun din. Let us start with our schedule. So, let us start with our schedule for the hedging instrument. Again, ito ay forward contract. Pero forward contract to sell. So, magbibenta tayo dito ng 1,500 US dollar. At magkana daw ang benta dapat natin? 
it is at a fixed price of 49.50 pesos per dollar. So, nakalock in or fix na yung ating magiging inflow. Alam na natin yung magiging inflow natin at maturity date after 90 days for the 1,500 US dollar. So, dahil nakafix na ang inflow, ang magpa-fluctuate na lang is the outflow. So, kung natatandaan nyo, dito sa ating hedge item, ang nagpa-fluctuate is the receivable. Siyempre, para mag-offset, dapat dito sa hedging instrument, ang nagpa-fluctuate is the payable. So, let's start at date of transaction, which is the acquisition of the forward contract, which is also on November 2, 2020, which is the same date as the date of sale. So, let's start by using the notional amount again of 1,500 US dollars at sabi natin ang ating fixed price is at forward rate of 49.50 so 1,500 US dollar multiplied by 49.50 pesos so that is a USD payable of 74,250 in Philippine peso so ngayon on November 2, 2020 so, magkano ang ating derivative? Siyempre, yung 74,250, hindi yan yung derivative. Kasi, yung value ng derivative comes from the changes in the price of the underlying value of measure. Which in our case is the foreign currency. So, wala pa namang changes in the exchange rate, specifically the forward rate on this date. Kaya, wala pa tayong value ng derivative. So, wala pang change. So, zero ang ating derivative. Again, bakit zero ang ating derivative? Kasi on this date, ang receivable natin is measured at 49.50. Kasi yun yung ating inflow, which is the fixed amount. So again, ang ating receivable is fixed at 49.50. Then, yung ating payable, which is hindi siya fixed. So ibig sabihin, nagpa-fluctuate ang ating payable. Pero on this date, November 2, siya ay naka-measure din at 49.50, which is similar dun sa receivable. So, kaya on November 2, ang ating receivable and payable is both measured at 49.50 forward rate. Kaya wala silang difference. Kaya wala pang value ang ating derivative. So, kaya wala rin tayong i-record na gain or loss. So, let us now proceed to the next date which is the end of November. So, the first month and after the date of inception of the forward contract. So, ganun ulit. Kailangan nating i-remeasure yung nagpa-fluctuate. At ano yung nagpa-fluctuate sa ating hedging instrument? Yung payable. So, again, let's start with the notional amount of 1,500 US dollar. At ang gamit natin is the forward rate on this date which is 49.43. Again, pag sinabi nating forward rate, eto yung ina-expect nating magiging spot rate at date of settlement. At ang ating date of settlement is January 31. So, kumbaga, on November 30, sa tingin natin, ang magiging spot rate daw on January 31 is 49.43. So, kaya ang forward rate is a future rate. So, as of November 30, magkano ating, so as of November 30, magkano ang ating adjusted na payable based on the forward rate on this date. So that is 1,500 US dollar multiplied by 49.43 pesos. So that is 74,145 pesos. So ngayon, on November 30, meron na ba tayong derivative? Of course, meron na tayong derivative kasi meron ng change sa forward rate. At ano ang nangyari sa ating payable? So ang payable natin ay bumaba from 74,250 naging 74,145. So ang difference nila is 105 pesos and that is again that is an asset so bakit siya asset so again ang ating derivative is the result of comparison ng ating inflow and outflow and since this is a forward contract to sell ang sabi natin ang inflow natin is fixed at 49.50 kung ang inflow natin is 49.50 at mas malaki siya sa ating outflow Again, itong outflow natin, ito yung nagpa-fluctuate dito sa ating forward contract to sell. So, ang difference daw natin dito is an asset kasi ang inflow is greater than outflow. So, at fixed na 49.50, magkano bang outflow natin as of November 30? So, ang expected outflow natin is at 49.43 which is mas mababa nga kaysa sa fixed rate na 49.50. Kaya, ang difference nila is an asset. Kaya itong 105 na to na derivative is considered an asset. 
And again, ganun pa din kapag ang outflow naman ang mas malaki kaysa sa ating inflow, the difference between the two is the liability. So again, ito ang ating analysis to determine whether a derivative is an asset or a liability. So ngayon, dahil nagkaroon tayo ng derivative na 105 which is an asset, so magre-recognize tayo ng gain or loss na mag appear sa income statement. Kasi nga, tayo ay fair value hedge. All changes in the fair value of the hedging instrument are recognized in profit or loss. Kaya itong gains and losses na ilalagay natin dito, yan ay lahat sa income statement. So for the month of November, tayo ay magre-recognize ng gain na 105 pesos kasi nagkaroon tayo ng derivative na asset. So ngayon, let us proceed to December 31, 2020, which is the year end. So ganun uli, i-update natin ang ating USD payable, pero in Philippine peso. So let's start with the notional amount of 1,500 US dollar gamit ang forward rate on this date, December 31, that is 49.35. So 1,500 US dollar multiplied by 49.35 Ang Philippine peso equivalent niya on this date is 74,025 pesos. So, ito na ang ating USD payable as of this date. So, again, obvious naman na nagkaroon ng change in forward rate. At dahil nagkaroon ng change, kailangan nating kumpitin yung cumulative change at yung change for the month. And sabi ko nga kanina, kapag ang change is cumulative, yun yung derivative amount. At yun ang nag appear sa statement of financial position. So, as of December 31, 2020, magkano ang cumulative change? So, that is 225 pesos positive. Again, that is an asset. So, paano na compute yung 225? That is the difference between 74 to 50. Tapos, pumaba ang ating payable naging 74.25. At dahil yan ay decrease in payable, kaya siya asset. And again, bakit siya asset? Kasi... Ang ating inflow, which is fixed at 49.50, is greater than the expected outflow as of December 31, 2020, which is at 49.35. So, 49.50 versus 49.35, ang difference nila is still an asset. And since ang ating derivative ay magiging 225 as of December 31, 2020, so from 105, dapat maging 225. So, magre-recognize ulit tayo ng change for the month of December and that is a gain of 120 so that is computed as 74025 at 74145 or kaya naman 225 minus 105 again yung 120 is again kasi tumaas ang asset na derivative o kaya naman bumaba ang liability so now let us proceed on January 31, 2021, which is the date of settlement. So on this date, January 31, 2021, hindi na tayo gagamit ng forward rate kasi ito na ang date of settlement. So this time, tayo na ay gagamit ng spot rate. So magkano ng actual payable? So that is 1,500 notional amount multiplied by the actual spot rate on this date which is 49.36 so 1500 US dollar multiplied by 49.36 that is 74,040 pesos so ito na yung final value nung ating 1500 US dollar na ibebenta on this date which is in Philippine peso kasi based na to sa spot rate so hindi na to forward rate so ang naka forward rate lang is yung from November 2 until December 31 so syempre kahit na spot rate ang ginamit natin dito so magkocompute pa rin tayo magkano ang magiging derivative before the settlement as of January 31, 2021 so again syempre ito yung change in the exchange rate and ganun pa din, ang kukumpite nating change is dalawa, isang cumulative at isang for the month. And yung cumulative, yun yung lalabas sa balance sheet. Pero yung for the month, yun yung lalabas sa income statement. So for the cumulative change, that is 210 pesos, which is positive. So ibig sabihin, yan ay asset. So paano na compute yung 210? That is 74,040 minus 74,250. So, kaya siya ay asset kasi ganun pa rin ang analysis natin. Ang inflow natin which is at a fixed rate of 49.50 is greater than the actual outflow. So, this time on January 31, 
spot rate na ang gamit natin dito for the outflow which is at 49.36. So dahil mas malaki ang 49.50 versus 49.36 kaya ang difference is an asset. At magkano yung asset na yun? That is 210 pesos. Yun nga lang, kahit siya ay asset pa rin on January 31, 2021, pero bumaba kasi ang ating asset, yung derivative. From 2 to 5 on December 31, naging 210 na lang. So dahil there is a decrease in asset, kaya tayo ay magre-recognize for the month of January ng loss. At magkano ang loss? That is 15 pesos. So paano na compute to? That is the difference between 74,040 and 74,025. O kaya... 210 minus 225. And ganito lang ang ating gagawin kasi ang sabi niya rito, forward element is included in the hedging relationship. Ibig sabihin, hindi na natin hatiin pa itong gains and losses at iseparate yung attributable to the spot element and forward element. Kasi nga daw, yung forward element is included in the hedging relationship. So let us now proceed to the journal entry for the hedging instrument. So let's start with the date of inception of the forward contract that is November 2. And sabi rito, ito daw ay net cash settlement basis. Kaya wala tayong entry on November 2 kasi net cash settlement basis. So pwedeng hindi na tayo mag-record ng receivable at payable. So ang i-record na lang natin is yung difference between the two which is the derivative. So ngayon, let's proceed to the next date which is November 30, 2020. So ano ang nangyari on November 30? Ang sabi rito, magre-recognize tayo ng gain na 105. Bakit? Kasi nagkaroon tayo ng asset na derivative. So ang entrada natin is debit forward contract asset. So ito na yung mismong cumulative change. So 105 at credit tayo ng gain for 105 pesos. Then, on December 31, ganun uli, magre-recognize tayo ng gain for 120. So, that is an increase in the derivative asset. So, that is debit forward contract asset for 120 and credit gain from the forward contract for also at 120 pesos. Then, on January 31, magre-recognize naman tayo ng loss na 15 pesos kasi nag-decrease ang ating derivative contract which is an asset of 210. So, yan ay debit loss for 15 pesos and credit forward contract asset also at 15 pesos. So, ngayon, atin nang isettle kasi wala naman tayong choice kasi ang forward contract is an obligation. Hindi tayo pwedeng umurong sa ating commitment. So, since ito daw ay net cash settlement basis, so, ibig sabihin, kahit na daw tayo ay forward contract to sell, ng 1,500 US dollar, ibig sabihin, hindi natin i-deliver yung 1,500 US dollar kasi tayo ay net cash settlement. Ang mangyayari lang is either magbabayad tayo o kaya naman tayo ay makakareceive ng magkano ng net, ng net ng inflow at outflow. So again, hindi tayo rito magdi-deliver ng 1,500 US dollar kasi tayo ay net cash settlement basis. So, paano natin isettle? I-compare natin ang ating inflow at outflow. Sabi natin, ang inflow natin is fixed at 49.50 at ang outflow natin is finally at 49.36. So, mas malaki ang inflow kaysa sa outflow kaya siya ay asset. So, dahil mas malaki ang inflow, Ibig sabihin, tayo ay makaka-receive. Babayaran tayo ng ating katransak na party dito sa forward contract. At magkano ang ibabayad niya? So, ang ibabayad niya is the difference between 49.50, the inflow, and the outflow of 49.36, multiplied by the notional amount of 1,500, which is equal to 210 pesos. Yun yung derivative. So, paano yun entradahan? Siyempre, dahil tayo ay babayaran, makakareceive tayo. At dahil tayo ay makakareceive, magde-debit tayo ng cash. 210 pesos. At saka natin, credit yung derivative account. Forward contract asset credit for 210 pesos. So, yan na lang ang ating net cash settlement. So, hindi na natin papadala yung 1,500 US dollar. So, ngayon, all gains and losses, sabi natin, will be presented in the income statement kasi tayo ay fair value 
hedge. So, by using this hedging instrument, so magkano ang net gain or loss resulting from the changes in the value of the hedging instrument. So, kumpitin natin. So, based sa ating schedule, ang net gain or loss on our forward contract is a gain of 210 pesos. So, yung result from the changes in the fair value of hedging instrument resulted to 210, which is a net gain versus the net loss in the hedge item. So, obviously, na-cover ng 210 na gain yung 90 pesos na loss ng hedge item. Yun nga lang, hindi yan nag-appear sa isang accounting period. Kasi partly 2020 and partly 2021 ang ating recording. Kasi nagsimula ang contract ng 2020 pero natapos siya ng 2021. So, magkano ang mag sa 2020 at magkano ang mag sa 2021? So, ang lilitaw sa ating profit or loss na net gain or loss from the offsetting ng hedge item and hedging instrument. So, for the month of November, ang magiging net gain or loss is 30 pesos, which is a net gain. Kasi, 105 dito na gain, tas dito loss na 75. So, obviously, mag-offset sila sa November at ang lilitaw is net na gain na 30 pesos. Then, in December, magkakaroon ng gain na 150 which in this case 120 na gain from the hedging instrument and gain din dito for the hedge item so eto lang ang sa 2020 yung 150 tsaka 30 which is 180 pesos na gain pero magkakaroon din tayo in 2021 kasi nga tumalo ng 2021 yung ating date of settlement so in this case parehas na loss 15 pesos kay hedging instrument at 15 pesos din na loss kay hedge item. So, ang total natin yan, nalilitaw sa January 2021 income statement is loss na 60 pesos. Pero again, when we consider the transaction as a whole, ang net gain or loss from this offsetting, from this hedging activity, is a 120 gain, which is the difference between the gain of 210 and 90 na loss. So this is our journal entry for hedging a foreign currency monetary asset using a forward contract to sell. So now let us proceed to our third illustrative problem. So this time, ang ating hedge item is a firm commitment, specifically a purchase commitment. So, again, on October 31, 2020, Trulalu Corporation entered into a non-cancellable contract to purchase merchandise on January 29, 2021 for $500. So, ibig sabihin, si Trulalu Corporation, the entity, siya ay committed to purchase a merchandise on January 29, 2021. Kasi non-cancellable yun. So, hindi yun pwedeng hindi sundin. So, magkano daw siya ay at $500. So, ito ay fixed price. So, due to the risk associated to the fluctuation of foreign currency exchange rates associated to the purchase commitment, the entity entered into a 90-day forward contract to purchase $500 at $25,075 pesos, which is to be settled on a net cash basis. So, sabi niya, the entity designated the forward contract as a hedging instrument in a fair value hedge. The entity prepares monthly financial statements whose functional currency is the Philippine Peso. So, sabi, ang kanyang functional currency is the Philippine Peso. Pero, ang kanyang commitment to purchase merchandise is denominated in US dollar. So, which is not the functional currency. So, ibig sabihin, ang kanyang purchase commitment is a foreign currency transaction. At obvious nga naman na siya ay exposed sa risk in foreign currency exchange rates fluctuation. So, kaya, para daw ma-minimize ang kanyang exposure sa risk, si entity nag-acquire ng 90-day forward contract. At para saan daw to? Bibili siya ng $500 na ang fixed price is 25,075 pesos. So again, ito ay isang forward contract which is a derivative instrument to purchase 
US dollar. So bibili siya ng dollar at a fixed price which is in Philippine peso. And sabi this will be a net cash settlement basis. And again, sabi natin dito, the forward element is included in the hedging relationship. It means, again, that the changes in the derivative instrument, in this case, the forward contract, the changes will not be separated into spot element and the amount attributable to the forward element. Kasi, yung buong change in the fair value of the derivative instrument will be part of the hedging relationship. Ibig sabihin, yung buong changes in the fair value of the derivative, the forward contract, yun yung gagamitin natin pang offset sa gains and losses na madederive natin from the hedge item. So ngayon, let us now proceed to our Excel file. So ngayon, nandito tayo sa ating Excel file. So before we prepare our journal entries, let us first again start this with a schedule. So ang schedule natin, will be our monitoring of the fluctuation in exchange rates related to our purchase commitment. So since tayo ay committed on January 29, 2021 para bumili ng merchandise at a fixed price of 500 US dollar, so kahit siya ay fixed price at 500 US dollar, syempre ang ating libro ay nire-record natin using the functional currency which is the Philippine Peso. So, ibig sabihin kahit na yung dollar value is fixed, yung peso value natin ay hindi naman siya fixed kasi nagpa-fluctuate ang exchange rate. So, we need to monitor the changes in the exchange rate kasi apektado nito yung magiging outflow natin in Philippine Peso. So, ang ating hedge item is the purchase commitment. So, let's start at October 31, 2020, the date when we entered the non-cancellable contract. So, let us start with the number of USD. So, ilang USD to? 500 US dollar. And kailangan syempre in Philippine peso. So, ano ang gagamitin nating exchange rate? So, since hindi pa talaga ito yung actual purchase transaction, so kasi ito pa lang yung pecha kung kailan tayo pumasok sa isang non-cancellable contract to purchase. Pero hindi pa talaga siya yung purchase transaction. So, hindi tayo gagamit ng spot rate. Instead, ang gagamitin natin is the forward rate. And again, when we say forward rate, ito yung ina-expect nating magiging spot rate at date of settlement. So again, ang gagamitin natin is the forward rate. So ano ang forward rate na gagamitin natin? Kung meron tayo ritong 3 sets of forward rates per date, merong 90 days, 60 days, and 29 days. So since ngayon ay October 31, at ang settlement date natin is January 29, which is in the next accounting period, so between the 3 forward rates dito sa ating October 31 na column, ang gagamitin natin is the 50.15. So, bakit 50.15? Which is the 90-day forward rate. Bakit ito? Kasi, ito yung ina-expect natin magiging spot rate at date of settlement which is on January 29, 2021 which is 90 days after October 31 which is our current date. So, ganun lagi ang gagamitin nating rule when we select the forward rate to be used. So ngayon, i-multiply na natin. 500 US dollar multiplied by 50.15, yan na ngayon ang ating expected outflow. So ito, expected outflow pa lang to in Philippine peso. Magkano siya? 25,075 pesos. So bakit siya expected outflow pa lang on January 29, 2021? Kasi base pa lang to sa forward rate, which is our forecasted spot rate at date of settlement. Kasi, di ba, hindi pa naman talaga ito yung magiging actual spot rate on January 29, 2021. Kaya, ito muna ay expected outflow. So, ngayon, pag-firm commitment, usually, hindi tayo gumagawa ng journal entry. Kasi, wala pa namang actual purchase transaction. Pero kapag ang firm commitment ay isang hedge item sa isang fair value hedge, kailangan natin magkaroon ng journal entry for the firm commitment. So gagawa tayo ng entrada sa libro. Pero para sa yung entrada sa libro? Ang e-entradahan lang natin sa libro kapag firm commitment at siya ay hedge item sa isang fair value hedge is yung changes. So ganun uli, kapag changes, meron tayong cumulative. Pag cumulative, yun yung ipepresent natin na either asset or liability. At syempre, meron ding change 
na for the month na yan yung magiging gains and losses natin na mag appear sa income statement. So, ngayon, compute natin yung change on October 31, 2020. So, meron bang change? Siyempre, yung change natin will be based on the changes in the exchange rate. So, since ito pa lang yung ating start, obviously, wala pa talagang change na nangyayari. Kaya, zero pa yung laman niya nung ating cumulative change tsaka nung for the month na change. So, ngayon, let us now proceed to the next date, November 30, 2020. So, ang number of USD natin, uli, syempre, hindi naman nagbabago. Yan pa rin ay 500 US dollar. So, ngayong November 30, ganun uli ang gagawin natin. Kukumpiti natin yung magiging expected outflow natin at date of settlement. And again, gagamit tayo ng forward rate. Hindi tayo gagamit ng spot rate. So, again, when we say forward rate, eto yung ini-expect natin magiging spot rate at date of settlement. So, magkano ang forward rate na gagamitin natin for November 30, 2020? Since... 60 days na lang ang natitira until January 29, 2021, the settlement date. So, ang gagamitin nating forward rate is 50.84. So, ito ang ating ginamit. Bakit? Kasi on November 30, 2020, ang ina-expect natin magiging spot rate 60 days after November 30, which is January 29, 2021, ay 50.84. So, ngayon, i-multiply na natin. 500 multiplied by 50.84, that is 25,420 pesos. So, ngayon, tingnan natin kung merong changes. Meron ba? And again, ang basis natin ng change is the exchange rate. So, obviously, nagbago ang forward rate, kaya meron tayong change. So, magkano ang change natin? So, dito sa cumulative, yan ay 345 pesos. Siya daw ay negative. Bakit siya negative? Kasi tumaas yung ating expected outflow dahil sa pagtaas ng ating forward rate. So, kaya siya negative kasi tumaas yung outflow. And, syempre, dahil naging liability siya, tumaas ang outflow, syempre, obviously, yan ay loss na 345 pesos. Ngayon, let us proceed to the next date, December 31, 2020. So, on December 31, 2020, Ganun uli ang gagawin natin. Compute na ang expected outflow. So, 500 USD multiplied by the forward rate on December 31, 2020. So, yun yung ine-expect natin magiging spot rate on January 29, 2021. At yun ay 50.38. So, ibig sabihin, eto ang ginabit natin. 50.38, bakit? Kasi as of December 31, 2020, which is 29 days na lang, Bago mag-settlement date, ang ina-expect nating magiging spot rate on this date, the date of settlement, is 50.38. So, i-multiply natin. So, pag multiply mo yan, ang sagot ay 25,190 pesos. So, ito ang ating expected outflow as of December 31, 2020. So, anong nangyari sa outflow natin? Yan ba ay nagbago? Siyempre, nagbago na naman. So, unahin natin kumpitin ang change na cumulative. So, pag sinabi natin cumulative, dapat yung change is from the start, starting October 31. So, magkano yun? So, yan ay negative 115. So, ibig sabihin liability. Bakit liability? Kasi from October 31 na 25,075, tumaas siya naging 25,190 na ang difference ay 115. Kaya siya ay negative kasi tumaas ang outflow. Pero for the month, syempre for the month of November, tayo ay magre-recognize ng gain na 230. Bakit gain? Kasi on November 30, ang ating expected outflow ay 25,420 which is bumaba on December 31, 2020. So bumaba ang outflow, syempre gain. O kaya bumaba yung liability. So gain. And now, let us proceed to the last date, the date of settlement, January 29, 2021. So, ganun uli. Ang kukumpitin natin is the outflow. Pero this time, hindi na siya expected outflow kasi siya na yung actual outflow. Bakit actual outflow na? Kasi date of settlement na to. Kasi ito na yung date na tayo ay bibili ng merchandise. So, 500 US dollar 
at ang gagamitin natin is no longer a forward rate. Instead, this will be the spot rate. So, ang spot rate natin is 50.48. So, ang forward rate lang natin is yung October 31 hanggang December 31, 2020. But for January 29, kasi dito na tayo bibili, so hindi na tayo gagamit ng forward rate. Spot rate na ang ating gagamitin. At ang kanyang actual outflow ay... 25,240 pesos. Ito na ang final Philippine peso value ng ating 500 US dollar on this date. So ngayon, kumpitin ulit natin yung change. Siyempre, obviously, nagbago yung exchange rate. So, unahin natin yung cumulative. So, simula October 31, ang outflow is 25,075. At ang actual outflow na natin is 25,240. Obviously, tumaas siya. Kaya liability pa rin to. Pero magkano? Siya ay... 165 pesos. Yan yung difference ng dalawa. Siyempre, yan yung difference ng forward rate on October 31 at yung spot rate on January 29. Multiplied by 500 US dollar. And for the month, ang ating change is a loss of 50 pesos. Bakit loss? Kasi tumaas ang ating outflow. On December 31, ang expected lang natin is 25,190. Pero yung naging actual, naging 25,240. So, lumaki ang outflow. So, magre-recognize tayo ng loss. So, now let us start preparing the journal entry. So, let's start on October 31, 2020. So, ang tanong is, paano tayo magjo-journal entry kapag ang hedge item is a firm commitment? So, dito purchase commitment. So, for the firm commitment, ang ating nire-record lang is the fluctuation, yung changes. Hindi natin nire-recognize or nire-record itong outflow na to na computed based on forward rate. So, ang nire-record lang natin is the change. So, itong column lang na to, yung last column ang ating i-record. So, umpisahan natin on October 31, 2020. So, kung titingnan nyo, walang laman to. So, ibig sabihin, wala tayong journal entry on this date, October 31. Pero, meron tayong Memorandum Entry. So, pag sinabi natin Memorandum Entry, yan yung narrative description ng ating transaction. So, i-describe natin dito yung firm commitment, yung kanyang terms. Pero, wala tayong journal entry. So, memo entry lang. So, kaya dun sa mga ginagawa natin previously, kung nilalagay ko ay no entry, it does not necessarily mean wala talagang entry. Ang tinutukoy nating no entry don is a journal entry. Pero, meron tayong memorandum entry. So, let us proceed to the next date, November 30, 2020. Ngayon, may laman na yung last column natin. Meron na kasing change. At siya ay loss na 345. So, tayo ay mag-debit ng loss na 345. So, again, ang ginamit ko ay isang offsetting account. So, isang account lang for the gains and losses. So, kung mag-debit balance siya, siya ay loss. Kung siya ay mag-credit balance, siya ay gain. Then, credit tayo ng purchase commitment. So, 345. So, itong purchase commitment na ito, ganun din siya. Gagawin ko siyang offsetting balance. Hindi ko na siya lalagyan ng label kung siya ay liability or asset. So, kapag siya ay may debit balance, siya ay asset. So, kung siya ay may credit balance, siya naman ay liability. Since ito ang ating unang journal entry using the purchase commitment na account at credit natin siya, it means that is a liability. Kaya kung titingnan mo ang ating schedule, siya ay naka-negative kasi liability siya. At yung purchase commitment nating account, ito yung ginagamit natin to record the cumulative change sa ating firm commitment. So, next date na tayo, December 31, 2020. And again, ang i-record natin is the change. So, 230 pesos na gain. So, ibig sabihin... Kaya siya gain kasi nag-decrease ang liability. Kaya to decrease the liability, i-debit natin ang purchase commitment, 230 pesos, and credit gain, 230 pesos. So ngayon, let us now proceed to the last date, the date we need to purchase the merchandise. Kasi syempre, wala tayong choice. Kailangan nating bilhin kasi tayo ay committed. Walang urungan. So, on January 29, 2021, bago natin bilhin, i-update muna natin uli yung ating purchase commitment na account. So, kailangan natin mag-recognize ng loss na 50 pesos. So, debit tayo ng loss, 50 pesos, and credit natin yung purchase commitment kasi tumaas yung liability natin. 
So that is 50 pesos also. And after natin ng entrada na to, ang purchase commitment account natin ngayon ay meron pa rin credit balance. So ibig sabihin, siya ay isang liability account. At ang balance nun syempre ay 165 pesos. So tayo na ngayon ay bumili. So syempre para bumili, debit tayo ng purchases. At magkano ang purchases natin? Siyempre, yan ay 500 US dollar. At since ito ay actual transaction na ang gagamitin natin is the spot rate, 50.48. Siyempre, 500 US dollar multiplied by the spot rate, yan ay 25,240. And siyempre, dahil tayo ay magbabayad ng US dollar na 500, credit tayo ng cash in USD. Again, ang binayad natin ay US dollar pero syempre, we need to record this in Philippine peso. Na ang kanyang Philippine peso value on this date is 25,240 pesos. Ngayon, since nagawa na natin yung ating commitment kasi nakabili na tayo, ibig sabihin, kailangan na natin i-recognize yung purchase commitment na account. Kailangan na natin siyang tanggalin. So, paano natin tatanggalin yun? So, sabi dito sa IFRS 9 or PFRS 9, paragraph 6.5.9, sabi, When a hedge item in a fair value hedge is a firm commitment, so katulad ng ginagawa nating illustrative problem, ang ating hedge item is a firm commitment at ang ating hedging relationship is a fair value hedge. So, firm commitment daw to, to acquire an asset or assume a liability. In our case, tayo ay bumili ng inventory so that is to acquire na asset pero ang ginamit muna nating entrada is the purchases account which is a nominal account so sabi niya the initial carrying amount of the asset or the liability that results from the entity meeting the firm commitment so yung ating asset na ni record which is the inventory which is the result of the entity si Trulalu meeting the firm commitment kasi binili na niya yung merchandise so obviously na meet na niya yung kanyang firm commitment so, ano daw ang gagawin? Yung initial carrying amount daw nun nung ating inventory will be adjusted. Ano ang i-adjust? Kailangan daw i-include yung cumulative change in the fair value of the hedge item that was recognized in the statement of financial position. Yung tinutukoy ditong cumulative change in the fair value of the hedge item na na-recognize sa statement of financial position is yung cumulative change in the exchange rate na nakarecord sa ating account title na Purchase Commitment. At yun yung pinipresent natin sa Statement of Financial Position. Ang sabi niya rito, yung balance ng account na yun, gagamitin natin yung pang-adjust doon sa initial carrying amount ng ating merchandise na binili. So sabi natin, ang Purchase Commitment natin dito is a liability. Ibig sabihin siya ay may credit balance at magkano? 165. So, ibig sabihin, ito daw ang gagamitin nating pang-adjust sa initial carrying amount ng ating merchandise na binili. So, tanggalin na natin yung purchase commitment at i-adjust yung ating purchases na account. So, ang entrada natin is debit purchase commitment for 165. So, after na entrada na yan, zero balance na yung purchase commitment na account. Then, credit tayo ng purchases for 165 pesos. So, kung titingnan nyo, ang purchases natin ay hindi na at 25,240 kasi mababawasan siya ng 165 pesos. So, 25,240 minus 165, yun ay 25,075 pesos. Ibig sabihin, nakalock in na yung ating purchases na account or inventory at 50.15 which is the forward rate on October 31, 2020. So, mamaya, Pagkatapos natin sa hedging instrument, malalaman natin kung bakit ang purchases natin is now recorded at 25,075. So, let us now proceed to the hedging instrument. So, ngayon dito sa ating hedging instrument, ganun uli bago tayo mag-prepare ng ating journal entry. Gawin muna natin ang ating schedule at itong schedule natin na to is to monitor the fluctuation in the exchange rate related to the forward contract. To Purchase 500 US dollar. Again, this is a forward contract to purchase. So let's start at date of inception, October 31, 2020, which is also the same date we entered into the firm commitment. So ang notional amount natin is the quantity of USD, which is 500 US dollar. 
at i-multiply natin to sa syempre ito ay forward contract, syempre sa forward rate. At ano ang forward rate na gagamitin natin? Kasi meron tayo ditong 3 sets ng forward rate on October 31, 2020. So ganun uli ang gagamitin nating concept. Since ngayon ay October 31, 2020, which is 90 days pa until the settlement date of January 29, 2021, Kaya ang ating gagamitin forward rate is 50.15 which is the 90 day forward rate. So ano itong 50.15? So ito yung ine-expect nating magiging spot rate 90 days after October 31, 2020 which is on January 29, 2021. Kasi pag ginamit natin is yung 50.25, ang ibig sabihin nitong 50.25, ito yung ine-expect mong spot rate 60 days after October 31, 2020, which is hindi naman yun yung settlement date. So, kaya ito ay 50.15. So, magkano siya pag multiply Yan na yung ating expected inflow at 25,075 pesos. So, kaya kung titingnan nyo dito sa ating schedule ng hedge item, ito expected outflow. Pero dito sa ating hedging instrument, expected inflow. Siyempre, usually, para magkaroon ng effective na Hedging activity, kailangan opposite sila. So ngayon, ito ay expected inflow lang. Bakit siya expected? Kasi hindi pa naman yan yung actual na spot rate at date of settlement. So ngayon, dahil ito ay forward contract, so kailangan natin kumpitin yung change. At dalawang ating changes na kukumpitin, isang cumulative na yan yung derivative. It's either an asset or liability. At ito yung nag appear sa statement of financial position. At isang for the month. At yun yung gain or loss na makikita sa income statement. And again, yung ating gain or loss in the change in the derivative instrument will no longer be separated into the spot element and forward element. Kasi nga sabi rito, the forward element is included in the hedging relationship. So kasama dapat siya dito. So ngayon, meron bang change? As of October 31, 2020, so obviously, wala tayong change. Bakit walang change? Kasi ito pa lang yung start, the date of inception. Tsaka wala naman tayong binayaran na premium para ma-acquire yung ating forward contract. So dito, walang value ang ating derivative. Kaya let's proceed to the next date, November 30, 2020. So ganun ang procedure natin. Kukumpiti natin ang ating expected inflow as of November 30. So, 500 USD gamit ang forward rate natin na 50.84. So, bakit 50.84? Kasi on November 30, dapat ang gamitin natin forward rate is yung ine-expect nating magiging spot rate at date of settlement, which is 60 days after November 30, 2020. Kaya, ang ginamit natin is 50.84. Kasi, eto ang ine-expect nating magiging spot rate 60 days after, which is January 29, 2021. So, i-multiply natin to. Ang peso value niya is 25,420. So, this is in Philippine peso. So, ngayon, meron na ba tayong change? Siyempre, meron ng change. At magkano? Siya ay 345 pesos. So, positive siya rito. It means this is an asset. So, bakit siya asset? Kasi tumaas ang ating expected inflow. From a forward rate of 50.50 naging 50.84. So, 345 ang ating value ng derivative which is to be presented in the asset section of the statement of financial position. And syempre, ang isa pa nating basis para ma-analyze whether a derivative is an asset or a liability is the comparison of the inflow and outflow. Ang ating inflow as of this date, November 30, 2020, is 25,420. Sabi natin, kapag ang inflow is greater than outflow, siya ay asset. So, nilagyan ko ng fix yung outflow. Bakit? Kasi tayo ay forward contract to purchase at 25,075 pesos. Ibig sabihin, yung outflow natin nakafix na siya at 25,075 pesos. Hindi na ito magbabago. Ang magpa-fluctuate na lang is the inflow. At as of this date, November 30, 2020, siya ay naka 25,420 pesos. So, ibig sabihin, mas malaki ang 25,420 kaysa sa outflow. So, ang difference nila is an asset. At magkano ang difference? 
that is 345. And syempre kapag ang outflow naman is greater than the inflow, obviously, ang difference nila will be a liability. So ito pa yung isa nating basis to analyze whether a change or the value of derivative is an asset or a liability. Then now, meron ba tayong change for the month of November? Siyempre meron. Magkano? 345. Which is a gain. Bakit siya gain? Kasi nagkaroon tayo ng asset at tumaas ang inflow. So gain siya na 345. Now let us proceed to the next date, December 31, 2020. So, ganun uli, on this date, December 31, 2020, kukumpitin uli natin yung expected inflow. So, 500 US dollar, ang gagamitin natin, forward rate is 50.38. Again, yung 50.38 is as of December 31, 2020, yan yung ine-expect natin magiging spot rate 29 days after, which is on January 29, 2020. At magkano yun? 50.38. So, yan ang gagamitin natin. So, i-multiply na natin. 500 multiplied by 50.38. That is 25,190 pesos. So, ngayon, meron ba uling change? So, syempre, obviously, merong change. Computein muna natin yung cumulative. So, magkano ang cumulative change? That is 115 pesos. At siya ay positive. Ibig sabihin, siya ay isang asset. So, kung ito ay cumulative change, so ang 115 ay na-compute as the difference between 25,075 and 25,190. And syempre, pag sinabing cumulative change, simula yan October 31, 2020, the inception date. Positive pa rin siya kasi mas malaki pa din yung expected inflow natin on December 31 compared doon sa expected inflow at the start. Yun nga lang, 150 na lang. Kaya siya ay asset. At kung ito naman ang gagamitin mong analysis, syempre ang outflow natin is fixed at 25,075 pesos pero ang inflow natin as of this date, December 31, is 25,190 which is greater than outflow. Kaya ang difference pa din ay asset. Then for the month of December, meron ba tayong change? Syempre meron. Magkano? 213 na loss. So bakit siya loss? Kasi bumaba ang expected inflow. From November 13 na 25,420, kasi for the month, so dito tayo magsa-start. So from 25,420, bumaba siya naging 25,190. O kaya naman, from 345 na derivative asset, naging 115 na lang. Then lastly, the date of settlement, January 29, 2021. So this time, since eto na ang date of settlement, hindi na tayo gagamit ng forward rate. Since eto na ang date of settlement, ang gagamitin na natin is the spot rate. So, simulan na natin. So, 500 US dollar multiplied by the spot rate on this date, that is 50.48. So, ang tanging forward rates lang is etong tatlo, from October 31 hanggang December 31. So, ngayon, ang kinukumpit na natin is hindi na expected inflow. Ito na yung actual inflow in Philippine pesos, that is 25,240 pesos. That is 500 USD multiplied by 50.48. So, magkano ang derivative natin ngayong petso na to? At dahil may change ulit, meron tayong kukumpitin na derivative. So, magkano na ang ating cumulative change? So, as of this date, the date of settlement, meron tayong 165 pesos na derivative at siya ay positive. Ibig sabihin siya ay asset. Bakit? Kasi... Mas mataas pa din ang inflow compared sa ating fixed na outflow. So, on this date, date of settlement, January 29, 2021, ang ating inflow is already at 25,240. Pero ang ating fixed outflow is 25,075. Kaya, ang difference nila is an asset, 165 pesos. And ngayon, magkano naman ang ating for the month of January. So, ang gain or loss natin is 50 pesos. And this is a gain. Bakit siya gain? Kasi from 115 naging 165. Or from 25,190 naging 25,240. Which are all asset. And since yung asset ay tumaas, for the month, meron tayong gain. So after nito, pwede tayong mag-prepare ng journal entries. So let us now prepare the journal entries starting 
October 31, 2020. So, ano ba ang ating journal entry? Ang gagamitin ba natin ay gross or yung net? So, based dito sa ating problem, this is to be settled on a net cash basis. So, ibig sabihin, walang actual delivery. So, kung walang actual delivery, hindi tayo magre-record ng receivable and payable. So, kapag net cash settlement, so ang i-record lang natin is yung changes. So, kung changes lang, so dito sa last column, ang gagamitin natin for the journal entries. So, on October 31, 2020, since wala namang laman itong gain or loss, Ibig sabihin, wala tayong journal entry on this date. Pero, meron tayong memorandum entry. Again, ang wala is journal entry. Pero, meron tayong memorandum entry that will state the terms of the forward contract. Ngayon, punta tayo sa next date, November 30, 2020. So, meron ng laman itong column na to. Sabi niya, gain na 345 kasi nagkaroon tayo ng derivative na asset. So, dahil merong asset, so debit tayo ng asset. So, forward contract asset, 345 at record tayo ng gain, 345 pesos. Now, let us proceed to the next entry on December 31, 2020. So, sabi dito may loss tayo na 230, kaya tayo ay mag-debit ng loss for 230. At bakit tayo nagkaroon ng loss? Kasi there is a decrease in the forward contract asset. Kaya credit tayo ng forward contract asset by 230 para ang maging balance niya on this date is 115. The next, the date of settlement. So, January 29, 2021. So, bago tayo mag-settle, i-update muna natin ang ating derivative, the forward contract asset. Ibig sabihin, we need to recognize first a gain of 50 pesos. Bakit tayo mag-recognize ng gain na 50 pesos? Kasi itataas natin ang forward contract asset natin to 165. So, ang entrada is debit forward contract asset for 50 pesos and credit gain 50 pesos. So, ngayon, updated na ang ating forward contract asset na balance. So, ano ang mangyayari? Paano tayo magsisettle? Tayo ba ay babayaran o tayo ang magbabayad? So, based sa ating derivative, ang derivative natin is a forward contract asset na ang balance on January 29, 2021 is 165 pesos. Ibig sabihin, tayo ay makakatanggap. Babayaran tayo ng other party in the forward contract. Bakit niya tayo babayaran? Kasi ang ating inflow at date of settlement, which is based on the spot rate, is 25,240 which is greater than our outflow na 25,075. So, ibig sabihin, yung ilalabas natin, mas maliit yon sa dapat nating matanggap. And since ito ay net settlement, yung difference na lang ang basis ng settlement. At since mas malaki ang inflow, tayo ay makakatanggap. At magkano ang matatanggap natin? Yung difference ng dalawa, which is the balance of the derivative asset. Kaya, ang entrada natin to receive the difference, which is the net cash settlement, is debit cash in Philippine peso. Magkano siya? 165 and credit the forward contract asset, 165 pesos. So, ang natanggap natin is a cash in Philippine peso. Hindi tayo rito makakatanggap ng 500 US dollar kahit na ito ay forward contract to purchase. Kasi this is a net cash basis. Wala rito ang magiging actual delivery. Ibig sabihin, hindi magdi-deliver ng 500 US dollar yung other party papunta sa atin. Ngayon, balik tayo dito sa ating purchases. Ang sabi natin, ang ating purchases is already recognized at 25,075. Kasi siya ay binawasan natin ng 165 from the balance of our purchase commitment. So, bakit ngayon siya 25,075 na lang? Kasi ang ating cash payment or ating cash outflow in effect ay also at 25,075. Bakit? Kasi dito, naglabas tayo ng cash na ang Philippine peso value is 25,240 at nagkaroon tayo dito ng inflow na 165 pesos. So, in effect, ang cash natin outflow is yung difference ng dalawa, which is also at 25,075. So, kaya nakalock in na yung purchases natin at 50.15. So, ngayon, tingnan natin kung 
nagkaroon ba ng offsetting ang gains and losses ng hedge item at hedging instrument. So dito sa ating hedge item, pag tinotal natin yung gains and losses, ang total niyan is 165 negative. So net loss ang magiging result ng changes in the exchange rate dito sa ating hedge item. Kung i-consider natin to as a whole transaction. Pero syempre, itong 165, ito ay na-recognize in two different accounting periods. Kasi itong dalawa sa 2020 at ito naman ay sa 2021. Pero syempre, income statement. Then, how about the hedging instrument? So, sa hedging instrument naman, pag tinotal natin yung gains and losses, siya ay may balance na 165 pesos at yan ay gain. So, yung gain na 165, ganun din, ito ay na-recognize in two different accounting period. Kasi, itong dalawang to, ito ay nirecord noong 2020 in the income statement and itong 50 ay in 2021. So, nag-offset ba sila? Obviously, nag-offset sila kasi ito ay negative loss, ito ay positive na gain. So, nagkaroon ng full offset ang gains and losses between hedge item and hedging instrument. Siyempre, dahil ang mga ginamit natin dito ang rates ay parehas na forward rates at ang ating quantity ng US dollar ay parehas din at 500 US dollar. So ngayon, we're done with the accounting for purchase commitment as the hedge item in a fair value hedge using a derivative instrument as the hedging instrument. And siyempre, ang forward element is included in the hedging relationship. So ngayon, let us now proceed to our last illustrative problem. And again, this is fair value hedge. Pero ang ating hedge item dito is sales commitment. So this is another type of firm commitment. Yun nga lang, tayo ay committed to make a sales transaction. Unlike kanina, ang ginawa natin is committed tayo to purchase a merchandise. So, basahin natin ang problem. On October 31, 2020, Tralala, whose functional currency is the euro entered into a non-cancellable contract to sell merchandise on January 29, 2021 for 700 US dollar. So since ang functional currency ni Tralala is euro and yung ating selling price is set at 700 pero ang currency niya is in US dollar which is a foreign currency, it means that this is a foreign currency transaction. So tayo ay exposed sa risk from the fluctuation of exchange rate. Kaya sabi niya, dahil tayo ay exposed sa risk, si entity, si Tralala, entered into a 90-day forward contract. So again, ito ay isang derivative instrument. At para saan daw? To sell 700 US dollar. So magbebenta tayo ng 700 US dollar gamit tong forward contract after 90 days. At magkano daw natin siya ibebenta? at 56,105 euro. So, ito yung ating fixed price. So, this is an inflow. So, ang inflow natin after 90 days is naka-fix na at 56,105 kasi tayo rito ay magbebenta. So, kung ang inflow ay naka-fix, ibig sabihin ang magfa-fluctuate is yung outflow. So, kaya pag tayo ay gumawa ng journal entries, ang magfa-fluctuate is yung ating expected outflow or expected payable. So, the forward contract is designated as a hedging instrument in a fair value hedge of the sales commitment. So, ang ating hedging instrument dito again is the forward contract which is a derivative instrument. At ang ating hedging relationship is fair value hedge. So, ibig sabihin, yung changes in the fair value of the derivative will be recognized in profit or loss. So, ang question is, lahat ba ng changes in the fair value of the derivative will become part of the hedging relationship? Ang sagot ay oo. So, lahat ng gains and losses ng hedging instrument natin ay magiging part ng hedging relationship. Ibig sabihin, lahat yun ay ipang o offset natin. Bakit? Kasi ang sabi dito, the forward element is included in the hedging relationship. It means that yung spot element hindi na natin ihihiwalay from the forward element. So, there is no need to separate the two kasi nga yung buong change in the fair value of the derivative ay gagamitin nating pang offset dito sa ating hedging activity. 
So the entity prepares monthly financial statements. Then the forward contract is to be settled with the actual delivery. So ibig sabihin hindi tayo magne-net cash settlement. Ito ay gross settlement kasi etong 700 US dollars na to, i-deliver talaga natin to doon sa party na katransact natin dito sa forward contract after 90 days kasi daw sabi with actual delivery. So punta na tayo ngayon sa ating Excel file. So ngayon, let us proceed to our Excel file. So, ang gagawin natin is magpe-prepare tayo ng ating journal entries. Pero bago tayo mag-prepare ng journal entries, tayo muna igumawa na ating schedule. So, ang ating schedule na ito yung gagamitin natin for the preparation of journal entries para madali na lang tayo mamaya. So, para saan to? So, ito yung ating monitoring ng ating hedge item. So, again, ano ba ang ating hedge item? Ito ay ang ating sales commitment. Sabi rito, tayo ay committed on January 29, 2021 na magbenta ng merchandise at a fixed price of 700 US dollar. And syempre, since fixed ang ating selling price pero denominated siya in foreign currency, so hindi fixed ang euro. Kasi nga, this is a foreign currency transaction. And since ang functional currency natin is euro, we need to record all transaction in euro. So, kaya kailangan natin i-monitor magkano kaya yung magiging euro value nitong $700 na makukolekta natin on January 29, 2021. So, let's start. So, umpisahan natin sa October 31, 2020 which is the date we entered into the non-cancellable contract to sell. So, let's start with the number of US dollar which is $700. Then, i-multiply natin sa exchange rate. So, ano ang exchange rate na gagamitin natin? So, ang gagamitin natin is the forward rate. We will not use the spot rate. Bakit? Kasi hindi pa naman ito actual sales transaction. Ito pa lang yung date kung kailan tayo pumasok sa ating commitment. So, dahil hindi pa naman talaga ito yung actual sales transaction, forward rate pa lang ang ating gagamitin. Hindi pa tayo gagamit ang spot rate. And, ang forward rate na gagamitin natin, syempre, is yung ini expect natin magiging spot rate at date of settlement. Pero kung titignan nyo ang ating data, so ang data natin dito for forward rates, meron tayong 90 day forward, 60 day, and 29 days. So ano ang gagamitin natin dyan? So ang ating gagamitin forward rate is 80.15. So bakit 80.15? Eh, meron tayong 80.25 at 80.59. So, bakit natin pinili ang 80.15? Dahil, eto daw yung ina-expect nating magiging spot rate 90 days after October 31, 2020. At ano ang 90 days after October 31, 2020? That is the date of settlement. January 29, 2021. So, ganun lagi uli ang magiging basis natin on which forward rate will be used in the computation. So, i-multiply natin. 700 US dollar multiplied by 80.15 that is the expected inflow of 56,105 euro. So, sabi natin dito, ito ang expected inflow which is the euro value of the 700 US dollar. Ito ang ina-expect natin magiging euro value on January 29, 2021 based on a 90-day forward rate of 80.15. And syempre, hindi naman ito yung lumilitaw sa financial statement. Ang lumilitaw lang sa financial statement ay ang changes. And for the firm commitment, dalawa ang ating monitor na change. Isang cumulative at isang for the month. So, unahin natin yung cumulative. Syempre, as of this date, ito pa naman ay start pa lang. So, wala pa tayong cumulative change. Maske yung for the month, wala pa rin tayong i-recognize na gain or loss kasi wala pa naman talagang change in the exchange rate. Kaya pumunta na tayo sa next date which is November 30, 2020. So, on November 30, 2020, ganun uli. Kailangan natin kumpitin kung magkano kaya yung magiging expected inflow natin in euro value at date of settlement January 29, 2021. So, let's start with 700 US dollar multiplied by the forward rate on this date. Ang gagamitin natin is 80.84. So, bakit 80.84? Kasi, ito yung forward rate which is the ini-expect nating magiging spot rate at date of settlement. Which is 60 days after November 30. 
So, kaya ito ang ginamit nating forward rate, 80.84. Again, ito yung in-expect nating magiging spot rate 60 days after November 30, which is January 29, 2021. So, magkano ang ating expected inflow as of November 30, 2020 in Euro? That is 56,588. So, meron na ba tayong change? Siyempre, obviously, nagkaroon na ng change ang ating forward rate. From 80.15, naging 80.54. So, magkano ang change natin? So, isang cumulative again at isang for the month. Siyempre, ang cumulative natin will be 483 euro. So, ito ay ang difference between 56,588 at 56,105. So, yan ay positive. Ibig sabihin, asset. So, bakit siya positive or asset? Kasi, tumaas ang inflow natin. Bakit tumaas ang inflow? Dahil tumaas ang forward rate. Again, ang cumulative change, yan ang lilitaw sa ating statement of financial position, either as an asset or a liability. Pero ito ay asset for this date. Then, sa income statement, may lalabas din, which is the gain or loss. And since this is an asset, so magkakaroon tayo ng gain of 483 in the income statement. Siyempre yan ay for the month of November. Then, punta ngayon tayo sa December 31, 2020, year end. So, ganun uli, ang ating gagamitin forward rate is yung ina-expect nating magiging spot rate on January 29, 2021, which is the date of settlement, which is 29 days na lang after December 31, 2020. Kaya ang gagamitin natin is 80.38. So, ito ang ating gagamitin, which is the 29-day forward rate. So, i-multiply natin, 700 multiplied by 80.38, that is 56,266 euro. So, ngayon, kumpitin natin yung cumulative change. And etong cumulative change na to, et, eto yung mag appear sa Statement of Financial Position on December 31, 2020. At ito ay 161, so yan ay positive kasi asset. So, bakit siya asset? Kasi tumaas ang ating expected inflow from... 56,105 naging 56,266 kasi tumaas ang ating forward rate. Siyempre, kung may lilitaw sa SFP, sa balance sheet, may lilitaw sa income statement. And that will be the gain or loss for the month of December. And magkano yon? Yun ay 322 euro. At ito ay loss. Bakit siya loss? Kasi bumaba yung asset. From 483 naging 161. So ngayon, pumunta na tayo sa next date, the date of Settlement. So, ito na yung date of sale. And since ito na yung date of sale, so ito na yung actual sales transaction. So, this time, hindi na tayo gagamit ng forward rate. Ang gagamitin na natin is the spot rate kasi ito na yung actual transaction. So, again, to compute for the inflow, so that will be 700 US dollar multiplied by 80.48. So, iba yung kulay natin kasi spot rate na to, hindi na to forward rate. So, magkano yan? Yan ay 56,336 euro. And again, hindi na ito expected inflow. Ito na ay yung actual inflow from the sale. Kasi ito na yung sales transaction. At ang gamit natin is the spot rate. So ngayon, meron change. Siyempre, isang cumulative at isang for the month. So magkano yung cumulative change? So ang cumulative change natin is 231 positive which is an asset. So bakit siya positive? Kasi tumaas ang inflow simula October 31. At paano nakuha tong 231? Syempre yan yung difference between 56336 the actual inflow at yung initial amount natin na 56,105. So tumaas siya. Kaya ito ay asset kasi increase in inflow. So for the month naman, ang change na ating i-recognize sa income statement is a gain of 70 pesos kasi from December 31 hanggang January 29, 2021 tumaas ang ating asset from 161 naging 231 euro. So ngayon, after nito, pwede na tayong gumawa ng journal entries related to the hedge item. So ngayon, let's start with the journal entry. So for the hedge item natin, sales commitment, ang ating journal entry will be taken from the last column. So yun yung gain or loss, which is the change in the expected inflow. So let's start on October 31, 2020. 
So again, ang i-record lang natin dito for the hedge item, the sales commitment, is yung change in the expected outflow. Hindi pa tayo magre-record ng sales kasi hindi pa naman dito yung actual sales transaction. So on this date, October 31, 2020, dahil wala namang change pa, so wala pa tayong journal entry. Pero meron tayong memorandum entry. So pag sinabi natin memorandum entry, this will be a narrative description of the transaction. Ibig sabihin, inanarrate natin na tayo ay pumasok sa isang non-cancellable contract to sell, which is a firm commitment. So ngayon, punta tayo sa next date, which is on November 30, 2020. So, on November 30, 2020, meron ng change na tayong i-record, which is, na kung titingnan natin dito, ay gain na 483 euro. So, to record again, syempre, that will increase the asset. At ano ang ating asset account for this particular hedge item? So, that will be sales commitment. So, debit 483 euro and credit gain 483. And ganun pa din, yung sales commitment na account title Ito yung ginagamit nating real account para i-record yung cumulative change sa ating firm commitment. So kapag ito ay may debit balance, siya ay asset, at kung may credit balance siya, doon naman siya sa liability section ng balance sheet pinipresent. Then, punta tayo sa year-end, December 31, 2020. So base dito, loss naman na 322. So tayo ay mag-debit ng loss, 322 and credit Sales commitment kasi nabawasan yung ating asset from 483 naging 161 so babawasan natin ng 322. Then lastly punta tayo sa date of settlement which is January 29, 2021. So dito na mangyayari yung actual sales transaction. So tayo na ay magbebenta kasi tayo ay committed. Bawal umurong. Pero bago natin i-record yung sales transaction, i-update muna natin yung ating sales commitment account. Based dito sa ating schedule, magre-record pa tayo ng 70 euro na gain for the month of January in 2021. Which means, this is an increase in asset. At ang asset account natin is the sales commitment. So, debit tayo 70 euro. And credit tayo ng gain also at 70. So, ngayon, after nito, ang sales commitment balance will be 231 and yan ay my debit balance which is an asset. Then, after nyan, pwede na tayo mag-entrada ng ating sales. So, to record the sales transaction, tayo ay mag-debit ng cash USD. So, ang i-debit natin is cash, which is denominated in US dollar, $700. Pero, syempre, this should be recorded in functional currency, which is the euro. So, ang euro equivalent ng 700 US dollar at this date is 56,336 which is based on the spot rate of 80.48 and again this is collected in dollars pero it should be recorded in the functional currency which is the euro then syempre credit tayo ng sales kasi sales transaction to so syempre credit din tayo ng 56,336 euro and after nito ang sabi ng standard yung ating sales for a sales commitment will be adjusted based on the balance of the sales commitment account. Since merong debit balance ang ating sales commitment account at kailangan na natin itong i-recognize kasi tayo ay nagkaroon na ng actual sales transaction which affected the profit or loss so kailangan na natin i-recognize yung ating sales commitment na account by a credit to sales commitment kasi nga debit balance yan. So magkakredit tayo ng sales commitment na account for 231 euro kasi yan na lang yung balance. Then, debit tayo ng sales. So, ang sales natin will be debited at 231 euro. So, after ng entry na to, ang sales balance natin is the difference between 56,336 and 231 and that is 56,105. So, ibig sabihin yung sales natin malalock in siya at 80.15 na forward rate which is at 56,105. So, mamaya malalaman natin bakit ang sales natin ay magiging 56,105 after natin makumpleto yung entries natin for the hedging instrument. Kaya, let us now proceed to our hedging instrument. So, ngayon, for the hedging instrument, again, katulad kanina, let us prepare first the schedule to facilitate our journal entries later on for the hedging instrument. So, eto namang schedule na to is to monitor again the changes in the exchange rate. At para saan? Para ito doon sa 
outflow. Kasi syempre, kung dito inflow, dapat dito outflow. Syempre, dapat opposite sila. Supposedly, dapat opposite sila. So, bakit outflow? Kasi ang inflow natin for the hedging instrument is already fixed. Bakit? Kasi ang sabi natin dito, yung 90-day forward contract natin is to sell 700 US dollar at a fixed price of 56,100 euro. Ibig sabihin, eto na yung inflow natin. Naka-fix na siya sa 56,105. Kaya, ang ating monitor na lang is yung fluctuation ng ating exchange rate related sa euro value ng ating magiging outflow. So, let's start on the date of inception, which is October 31, 2020, which is the same date we entered into the firm commitment. So, ang ating notional amount is 700 US dollar multiplied by the forward rate. Since ito ay forward contract, ang gagamitin natin ay forward rate. So, again, ano ang forward rate? Ito yung ini-expect natin magiging spot rate at date of settlement of the forward contract, which is January 29, 2020. 21. So, on January 29, 2021, which is 90 days after October 31, 2020, ang forward rate natin is 80.15. So, again, ito uli ang ating gagamitin, 80.15. Kasi nga, as of this date, October 31, meron bang 90 days until the date of settlement, which is January 29, 2021. So, multiply natin, 700 multiplied by 80.15, ang euro value ng ating expected outflow is, is 56,105. So, again, ito ang ating expected outflow or expected liability. So, ngayon, hindi ito yung actual na lilitaw sa ating financial statement. Kasi, ang lilitaw dapat is yung value ng derivative. Again, ang value ng derivative ay nakukuha sa changes in the underlying value of measure. So, kailangan magbago muna yung exchange rate pago magkaroon ng value ang ating derivative. And, lagi na dalawa ang change na kinukumpute natin. Isang cumulative at isang for the month. So, yung cumulative, yan yung lumilitaw sa ating balance sheet. At yung for the month, which is the gain or loss, syempre, yan yung lilitaw sa ating income statement. At bakit sa income statement? Kasi ang ating hedging relationship is fair value hedge. Ibig sabihin, all changes in the fair value of the hedging instrument will be recorded in the profit or loss. Bakit all changes? Kasi ang forward element natin is included in the hedging relationship. Ibig sabihin, any amount recorded here as part of the gain or loss, hindi na natin kailangan i-split pa or i-separate yung related or attributable sa spot element at yung attributable sa forward element. So kung ano man yung change na lalabas dito, yun na yung mag appear sa profit or loss na gagamitin nating pang offset dito sa change in the fair value of our hedge item. So, ngayong pecha na to, October 31, 2020, meron na bang change? Siyempre, wala pang change kasi ito pa lang ang start ng ating forward contract. Kaya pumunta na tayo sa next date which is November 30, 2020. So, again, kukumpitin natin yung ating expected outflow based on the ini-expect nating magiging spot rate at date of settlement. So, let's start with 700 US dollar multiplied by the forward rate. Ang forward rate natin is 80.84. So again, bakit uli? 80.84 kasi as of November 30, 2020, which is the current date, meron na lang 60 days until January 29, 2021, which is the date of settlement. Na ang spot rate na ina-expect natin on this date is 80.84, which is the forward rate. Kaya ito ang gagamitin natin. So 700 US dollar multiplied by 80.84 euro. So, ang euro value ng ating expected outflow as of this date is 56,588. At syempre, pwede na natin makompute ang change kasi nagbago ng ating forward rate. So, isang cumulative at isang for the month. At ano ang cumulative change? That is 483 euro at yan daw ay negative. Ibig sabihin, liability. At bakit yan ay liability? Kasi ang ating outflow ay tumaas dahil ang forward rate ay tumaas. From 80.15 naging 80.84. Tsaka syempre, to analyze whether this is a liability or an asset, babalik tayo dun sa ginagamit natin kanina. Yung comparison ng inflow and outflow. 
Ang sabi natin, if yung inflow is greater than outflow, syempre, ang difference niyan will be an asset kasi mas malaki yung matatanggap natin kaysa sa ilalabas natin. Pero, if the outflow is greater than the inflow, obviously, mas malaki ang ilalabas. So, ang difference is a liability. So, ano ba itong 483? Sabi niya, liability. So, kung liability to ibig sabihin daw, ang outflow is greater than inflow. Bakit? Kasi, ang outflow natin as of this date, November 30, is 56,588. Pero, ang inflow natin, which is fixed at 56,105, ibig sabihin, ang inflow natin is mas mababa talaga kumpara sa outflow. Kaya, ang difference is a liability. Kaya, ito ay liability. So, ngayon, syempre may cumulative, meron tayong for the month. Since ito yung first reporting period natin after the date of inception, so yung gain or loss natin, so similar din siya at 483 loss. At syempre, dahil tumaas ang outflow, so ito ay loss, negative 483 euro. So ngayon, pumunta na tayo sa ating December 31, 2020 year end. So ganun pa rin, kumpitin ang expected outflow in euro. So, tayo ay 700 USD multiplied by the forward rate. And since ito ay December 31, 2020, so ang ating ipo-forecast na lang is yung magiging spot rate at date of settlement, which is ilang araw na lang ang natitira? 29 days. Kaya, ang gagamitin nating forward rate is 80.38, which is as of December 31, 2020, ito yung ina-expect nating magiging spot rate After 29 days, which is January 29, 2021, the settlement date. So, multiply natin 700 US dollar multiplied by 80.38. Ang euro value niya is 56,266. At syempre, meron uling change. Isang cumulative at isang for the month. Ang cumulative is 161. At negative siya. Ibig sabihin, liability. Bakit? Kasi ang outflow natin is mas malaki pa din compared sa inflow. Tatandaan nyo lagi na ang inflow natin dito ay 56,105 euro. Pero dito, as of December 31, 2020, ang ating outflow is 56,266, which is greater than our fixed na inflow. Kaya ang ating difference is still a liability. Magkano? 161. And ito yung cumulative change. So, ito ay na-compute as the difference between the two. Or, the difference between 80.38 and 80.50 na forward rate. Siyempre, multiplied by the notional amount. Then, siyempre, meron din tayong for the month. At magkano siya? Siya ay gain na 322 euro. Bakit gain? Kasi bumaba ang liability from 483 naging 161. So, yan yung difference. O kaya, difference din yan ng 80. 0.84 at 80.38. Dahil bumaba ang forward rate na related sa ating outflow, syempre, magkakaroon ng gain. So ngayon, punta na tayo sa ating date of settlement, which is January 29, 2021. So ganun uli, 700 US dollar multiplied by the spot rate. So ngayon, hindi na tayo kagamit ng forward rate. Bakit? Kasi eto na ang date of settlement. So ano ang spot rate at January 29? That is 80.48. So, multiply natin itong dalawa. That is 56,336. So, ito, hindi na to expected outflow. Ito na ay actual na outflow. So, may change ba uli? Siyempre, may change. Naging 80.48 ang ating exchange rate. So, magkano ang ating derivative right before settlement? So, ang cumulative change is... 231 which is again a liability. Bakit liability? Kasi ang ating inflow which is fixed at 56,105 ay mas maliit pa din kumpara sa outflow natin. Kasi ang actual outflow na natin is 56,336. So dahil mas malaki yan kesa sa inflow, liability pa din, 231 euro. At meron din tayong change for the month of January that is 17 na loss. Bakit loss? Kasi tumaas ang ating Liability from 161 naging 231 ang ating derivative na liability. So after nito, pwede na tayong mag-journal entry. So ngayon, for our journal entry, ang sabi dito, ito ay gross settlement. Bakit gross settlement? Kasi based sa ating problem, the forward contract is to be settled with actual delivery. Ibig sabihin, dahil tayo ay magbebenta ng 700 US dollar, magkakaroon daw ng actual delivery. So, 
at date of settlement ng ating forward contract, tayo ay magdi-deliver ng 700 US dollars sa party na kakontrata natin dito sa forward contract. So, ano ang ating journal entry kapag may actual delivery? So, umpisa natin, October 31, 2020. So, tayo ay magde-debit ng Euro Receivable, which is the fixed inflow. So, kaya yan receivable kasi yan yung magiging inflow natin at a fixed amount of 56,105. Then, credit tayo ng Dollar Payable, which is 56,105 as well. Kasi as of this date, ang gamit nating forward rate is 80.15. So, ngayon, on October 31, 2020, ito ang ating mga accounts pero syempre hindi ito yung lalabas sa ating financial statement. Kasi ang lalabas sa ating financial statement is yung difference ng dalawa. Kasi ang lumalabas lang sa ating financial statement, specifically the statement of financial position, is yung derivative. At syempre ang derivative is yung difference ng ating inflow at outflow. And syempre, as of this date, October 31, 2020, ang ating expected inflow, ang receivable natin and payable is parehas pa so wala silang difference. Kaya wala tayong value ng derivative. Kasi ang value ng derivative na lumilitaw sa ating statement of financial position is the difference between the receivable balance and the dollar payable balance. So again, dahil wala pang difference ang dalawa, wala pang value ang derivative on this date, October 31. So punta tayo ngayon sa next date, November 30, 2020. And syempre, ang ating mga journal entries will be based on the gain and loss dito sa ating last column. So sabi, tayo ay magre-recognize ng loss na 483. Kaya syempre, debit tayo ng loss. 483 at credit tayo ng dollar payable kasi ang dollar payable ang hindi fix. Yan yung outflow na nagpa-fluctuate. So magkano? 483 credit. Then next day tayo, December 31, 2020. Then ang sabi dito sa ating schedule, dapat tayo mag-recognize ng gain na 322 euro. So syempre dahil gain yan, yan ay decrease in liability kasi bumaba ang ating liability from 483 naging 161. So, debit tayo ng dollar payable. So, that is 322 and credit gain na 322. Then, punta ngayon tayo sa ating date of settlement. So, ang date of settlement is January 29, 2021. So, bago tayo mag-settle, i-update muna natin yung ating dollar payable kasi nagbago uli. Naging spot rate na ang basis natin. So, sabi rito, Magre-record tayo ng loss na 70. So, debit tayo ng loss, 70 euro. Then, credit tayo ng dollar payable, 70 euro. So, ngayon, after ng journal entry na to ang balance na ng dollar payable is already at 56,336. So, pwede na tayo ngayon mag-settle ng ating forward contract. And sabi dito, ang... Um, So sabi dito, meron tayong liability kasi mas mataas yung outflow kaysa sa magiging inflow natin. So syempre, lugi tayo dun. Unfavorable sa atin ang result ng forward contract. Pero syempre, ang forward contract gives the holder the obligation. So wala tayong choice kundi isettle ang obligation. So gawin na natin. So unahin natin yung pag-collect. So tayo ay mag-debit cash in euro. At magkano ang makukolekta natin? Syempre, yun yung fixed amount which is at 56,105 at i-credit natin yung ating euro receivable at 56,105. Tapos ngayon, tayo ay mag-deliver. I-deliver natin ang 700 US dollar by crediting cash USD pero ang euro value na i-record natin is 56,336. So again, Etong credit cash in USD, ito yung actual delivery ng 700 US dollar. And tayo ay magde-debit syempre ng dollar payable which has a balance of 56,336 as well. So ngayon, ito ng ating mga journal entries related sa ating hedge item and hedging instrument. So sabi natin dito, ang sales natin is nakalock in sa 56,105 kasi binawasan natin siya ng 231. At bakit? Kasi... Ang natanggap lang nating cash dito is 56,105. So, ito yung euro value ng natanggap nating cash. Kasi ito yung fixed price sa ating forward contract. Kung titingnan mo, nag-debit tayo dito ng cash USD 56,336 pero nag-credit din tayo dito ng cash USD 56,336. So, in effect, yung nakolekta natin dito sa hedge item na dollar 
yun yung i-deliver natin dito sa ating pag-settle ng forward contract. At dahil ang ating hedging instrument ay with actual delivery, so ibig sabihin tayo ay magde-deliver talaga ng 700 US dollar. So yung 700 US dollar na natanggap natin from the hedge item, pwede na nating hindi i-convert yun into euro. Kasi yun yung 700 US dollar na pwede nating i-deliver para masettle yung ating forward contract. Pero kung ang ating hedging instrument o yung forward contract is to be settled on a net cash settlement basis, ibig sabihin wala tayong i-deliver na 700 US dollar pero meron tayong matatanggap na 700 US dollar from the hedge item. So, yung makokolekta natin doon sa hedge item, kailangan agad natin yung i-convert into the functional currency, the euro. Kasi kung hindi natin siya i-convert, may possibility na maging exposed pa rin siya sa fluctuation ng exchange rate between the euro and the dollar. Pero since dito nga sa ating problem, ang ating hedging instrument ay with actual delivery, so okay lang na yung dollar na nakolekta natin from the hedge item ay hindi na natin in-convert diretso sa functional currency na euro kasi nga yun yung gagamitin nating US dollar na i-deliver natin to settle the forward contract. So this ends our discussion on hedging na ang gamit nating hedging instrument is a derivative instrument specifically the forward contract at ang ating hedging relationship is a fair value hedge. So for the discussion about cash flow hedge that will be in a separate video. So yun lang so class dismiss.